evening, Dynasty Darling. Yes, thank you so much for coming out to Dynasty Typewriter. Are we ready to get this thing started? Oh my gosh. Well, we're going to soon be joined by our hosts, Patrick Codner, Pete the Retailer, and Alex Robinson as they present the Naboo movie. But first, a very special message. Hi, everybody. Retired filmmaker George Lucas here. Thanks for coming to this live reading of Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace. I'm very happy. Uh, we had a lot of fun making the movie. Uh, I was thrilled to hear that a bunch of people were going to read the script for it. it. Makes me feel like, oh, it must have done a really good job on the movie if people don't want to read the script. Is that enough? Thank you guys for coming. Uh, I'm Patrick Kotner. I'm Alex Robinson. And I'm Pete the Retailer. Um, and tonight, uh, we're going to be doing a reading of Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace. Yes. These are our Naboo movie players behind us. They're going to be reading all the parts. Uh, we will be narrating. Yes. We're going to uh, walk our way through it. There's a, More or less, we're doing the uh, exact screenplay as published with one or two minor cuts and uh, adjustments. You'll see. You'll see. Yeah. Uh, what do we need to do before we start? Before we start, I know I hate audience participation, so I want to do an audience participation bit. Yeah. I want to, you guys talk for a second. I'm going to grab some of these. Okay. One. In the back. In the back. All the way in the back. Who do we got? Has anyone here not seen The Phantom Wait. Menace? Oh, that's a great question. Has anyone somebody, never seen this movie? Somebody in the, oh look. There's, There's one. Oh, hand. I love it. All right. Here's the deal. Way later in the movie, after you've already forgotten about it, I'm going to need you to read one line. I'll come running back over here at that time. But there's one line on this card that's highlighted that you're going you're gonna to have to read, okay? Is that, are you willing to do that? Thank you. Can you pass that down there? Don't anyone else look at it, though. No spoilers. All right. So your interpretation, it's up to you. But I will, I'll, I'll be back in about an hour. Thank you. All right. I mean, I think we're good to go, right? Let's get this galaxy going. Chrysanthi Tan's over here. They're going to be playing music for us all night. Um, let's kick it off. Let's do it. Would everyone please join us for the 20th Century Fox fanfare? <laughs> A long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away. It's Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace! <laughs> Turmoil has engulfed the Galactic Republic. The taxation of trade routes to outlying star systems is in dispute. Ho hoping to resolve the matter with the blockade of deadly battleships, the greedy Trade Federation has stopped all shipping to the small planet of Naboo. Now, while the Congress of the Republic endlessly debates this alarming chain of events, the Supreme Chancellor has secretly dispatched two Jedi Knights, the guardians of peace and justice in the galaxy, to settle the conflict. Captain. Yes, sir. Tell them we wish to board at once. Yes, sir. A small space cruiser is heading towards the beautiful green planet of Naboo, which is surrounded by hundreds of Trade Federation battleships. In the cockpit of the cruiser, the captain, Maui Nematicor, and pilot... <laughs> Close enough. There's going to be a lot of that tonight, guys. <laughs> And the pilot, Antidara Williams, maneuver closer to one of the battleships. The captain looks to their view screen where Newt Gunray, an Amoidian trade viceroy, waits for a reply. 
With all due respect for the Trade Federation, the ambassador for the Supreme Chancellor wished to board immediately. Oh, yes, yes, of course. <laughs> oh, as you know, our blockade is perfectly legal. <laughs> Be happy to receive the ambassador, just happy to. <laughs> <laughs> the small space cruiser docks in the enormous main bay of the Federation battleship. A protocol droid, TC-14, waits at the door of the docking bay. Two worker droids, PK-4 and EG-9, watch as two darkly robed figures are greeted by TC-14. I am TC-14 at your service this way, please. <laughs> They must be important if the Viceroy sent one of those useless protocol gearheads to greet them. Or a public cruiser. <laughs> That's trouble, don't you think? I'm not made to think. <laughs> <laughs> a door slides open, and the two cloaked shapes are led into the formal conference room by TC-14. <laughs> <laughs> I have a bad feeling about this. I don't sense anything. It's not about the mission master. It's something elsewhere, elusive. No, don't center on your anxiety, Obi-Wan. <laughs> Keep your concentration here and now, master where it belongs. Yo master Yoda says that I should be mindful of the future. But not at the expense of the moment. Be mindful of the living force, my young Padawan. Yes, master. Do you think the trade viceroy will deal with the chancellor's demands? <laughs> These Federation types are cowards. The negotiations will be short. On the bridge, Newt Gunray and Daltroy Dauphine stand <laughs> stunned before TC-14. What? What did you say? <laughs> the ambassadors are Jedi Knights, I believe. I knew it. They were sent to force a settlement. Hey, blind me, we're done. Well, stay calm. I'll wager the Senate isn't aware of the Supreme Chancellor's moves here. Go, distract them until I can contact a Lord Sidious. Are you brain dead? I'm not going in there with two Jenny. Send the droid. Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan sit at the large conference table as the door slides open, and TC-14 enters with a tray of drinks and food. Is it in their nature to make us wait this long? No. I sense an unusual amount of fear for something as trivial as this trade dispute. On the bridge, Newt, Dauphine, and Rune Hako are before the hologram of Darth Sidious, a robed figure whose face is obscured by a hood. This... <laughs> <laughs> oh. Scheme of yours has failed, Lord Sidious. The blockade is finished. We dare not go against these Jedi. <laughs> you seem more worried about the Jedi than you are of me, Dauphine. I am amazed, Viceroy. Oh, yes, my lord. <laughs> I don't want that stunted slime in my sight again. Do you understand? Oh, yes, my lord. <laughs> <laughs> Newt gives Dauphine, Dauphine a fierce look, and Dauphine, terrified, rushes off the bridge. This turn of events is unfortunate. We must accelerate our plans, Viceroy. Begin plan landing your, damn it. Oh. Begin landing your troops. <laughs> Uh, my lord, um, um, is that legal? I will make it legal. Uh -huh. And, uh, the jetty? The chancellor should never have brought them in this. Kill them immediately. Oh, yes, yes, my lord, as you will. In the cockpit, Maori Macador and Antidar Williams look up and see a gun turret swing around and point directly at them. Captain, look. No! Warn! The battleship gun fires. The Republic cruiser explodes. In the conference room, Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan leap to a standing position with their laser swords drawn. Ah! <laughs> ah, sorry. 
Eraser, the Viceroy. Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan turn off their swords and listen intently. (laughs) A faint hissing sound can be heard. Gas. Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan each take a sudden deep breath and hold it. A hologram of Newt, surrounded by battle droids, appears in the conference room hallway. Oh, they must be dead by now. (laughs) Blast what's left of them. (laughs) The hologram fades off as a battle droid. OWO-1 cautiously opens the door. A deadly green cloud billows from the room. Battle droids cock their weapons as a figure stumbles out of the smoke. It is TC-14 carrying the tray of drinks. Oh, excuse me. I'm so sorry. The protocol droid passes the armed camp just as two flashing laser swords fly out of the deadly fog, cutting down several battle droids before they can fire. The breach is a cacophony of alarms. Newt and Rune watch OWO-1 on the view screen. Uh, not sure exactly what... <laughs> OWO-1 is suddenly cut in half mid-sentence. <laughs> oh, what in the blazes is it going on here? Uh, you ever encountered a jitty night before, sir? Well, not exactly, but um, I don't um, seal off the bridge. That ain't gonna be enough, sir. <laughs> I want destroyer droids up here at once. We ain't gonna survive this. <laughs> in the hallway, Qui-Gon cuts several battle droids in half, <laughs> creating a shower of sparks and metal parts. <laughs> he makes his way to the bridge door and begins to cut through it. Oh, close his blast doors. <laughs> The huge, very thick blast door slams shut, followed by a second door, then a third. There's a hissing sound as the huge doors seal shut, and Qui-Gon stabs the door with his sword. They're still coming through. Oh, impossible. This is impossible. Where's them destroyer droids? Ten ugly destroyer wheel droids roll down the hallway at full speed. Just before they get to the bridge area, they stop and transform into their battle configuration. Qui-Gon can't see them, but senses their presence. Destroy our droids! Offhand, I'd say this mission is past the negotiation stage. <laughs> <laughs> it's a standoff! Let's go! Newt and Rune stand on the bridge, watching the view screen as the wheel droids speed to the doorway. <laughs> we have them on the run! <laughs> <laughs> Sir, they done gone up the ventilation shaft. <laughs> Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan appear at a large vent in a giant hangar bay. They are careful not to be seen. Thousands of battle droids are loading onto landing craft. <sighs> battle droids. It's an invisible army. That's an odd play for the Trade Federation. Federation. We've got to warn the Naboo and contact Chancellor Valorum. Let's split up. Stow aboard separate ships and meet down on the planet. Well, you were right about one thing, Master. What? The negotiations were short. (laughs) 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 On the bridge, Tay Howe receives a transmission from the planet. Sir, a transmission from the planet. It's Queen Amidala herself. Oh, at last we're getting results. <laughs> On the view screen, view screen, Queen Amidala appears in her throne room. Wearing her elaborate headdress and robes, she sits surrounded by the governing council and her handmaidens. Oh, again, you come before me, <laughs> Your Highness. I didn't see your hologram in there. <laughs> The Federation is pleased. You will not be pleased when you hear what I have to say, Viceroy. Your trade boycott of our planet has ended. I was not aware of such a failure. (laughs) This is going to end well. I have word that the Senate is finally voting on this blockade of yours. Oh, I take it you know the outcome. I wonder why they bothered to vote. Enough of this pretense, Viceroy. I'm aware the Chancellor's ambassadors are with you now, and that you have been commanded to reach a settlement. I know nothing about any ambassadors. You must be mistaken. Amidala, surprised at his reaction, studies him carefully. (laughs) Beware, Viceroy. 
The Federation is going too far this time. Oh, your highness, we would never do anything without the approval of the Senate. I'm yeah. sorry? I said without the approval of the Senate. <laughs> One more time. What about the booty about the Gucci goo? Got it. <laughs> You assume too much. We will see. The queen fades off, and the view screen goes black. She's right. The Senate will never... It's too late now. <laughs> you think she expects a surprise attack? I don't know, but we must move quickly to disrupt all communications down there. <laughs> In the Naboo Palace throne room, the queen, her handmaidens, and her governor, Sio Bibble, stand before a hologram of Senator Palpatine, a thin, kindly man. <laughs> How could this be true? I have assurances from the chancellor. His ambassadors did arrive. It must be the get negotiate. <laughs> the hologram of Palpatine sputters and fades away. Senator Palpatine, what's happening? Check the transmission generators. <laughs> a malfunction? <laughs> it could be a Federation jamming us, your highness. Communications disruption can only mean one thing. <laughs> Invasion. Don't! <laughs> don't jump to conclusions, Governor. The Federation would not dare go that far. The Senate would revoke their trade franchise and they'd be finished. <laughs> we must continue to rely on negotiation. Negotiation? We've lost all <laughs> communications. <laughs> and where are Chancellor's ambassadors? How can we negotiate? We must prepare to defend ourselves. This is a dangerous situation, Your Highness. Our security volunteers will be no match against a battle-hardened Federation army. <laughs> I will not condone a course of action that will lead us to war. <laughs> Six landing craft fly in formation toward the surface of the planet Naboo. One by one, the Federation warships land in the eerie swamp. The droid invasion force moves out of the swamp and onto a grassy plain. Why gone? <laughs> <laughs> runs <laughs> Wagon runs through the strange landscape, glancing back to see the monstrous troop transports emerging from the mist. Animals begin to run past him in a panic. An odd frog-like Gungan, Jar Jar Binks, squats holding a clam he retrieved from the murky swamp. <laughs> Jar Jar looks up and sees Quagon and the other creatures running like the wind towards him. One of the huge tanks bears down on the Jedi like a charging locomotive, and Jar Jar stands transfixed, still holding the clamshell in one hand. Oh, wait a second, you're saying that I... <laughs> Hold on. You're saying that I, Daffy Duck, drove all the way from Sherman Oaks to read as Jar Jar Binks? <laughs> you know, I take it back. Rumor has it that he's the real mastermind behind all this, so the show must go on. Where was I? Oh, yeah. Mm. Oh, no! <laughs> Jar Jar drops the shell and grabs onto Qui-Gon as he passes. God. The Jedi is caught by surprise. Help me! Help me! <laughs> Help me! Yeah. Let go! The machine is about to crush them as Qui-Gon drags Jar Jar behind him. Yeah. Just as the transport is about to hit them, Qui-Gon drops, and Jar Jar goes splat into the mud with him. <laughs> the transport races overhead. Qui-Gon and Jar Jar pull themselves out of the mud and stand watching the war machine disappear into the mist. Jar Jar grabs Qui-Gon and hugs him. <laughs> Oi, mooey, mooey, I love you. <laughs> the frog-like creature kisses the Jedi. Are you brainless? You almost got us killed. I speak. <laughs> the ability to speak does not make you intelligent. Now get out of here. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Misa, stay. <laughs> Misa, you humble servant. <laughs> that won't be necessary. Oh, oh, but this. <laughs> tis demanded by the gods. God. Tis a live debt, tis. Misa called a Jar Jar Binks. 
I have. <laughs> I have no time for this. Say what? <laughs> In the distance, two staps barrel down on Obi Wan. Oh no, we forgot up. Qui Gon throws Jar Jar into the mud. Ah, stay down. Oh. His head pops up. <laughs> Die! <laughs> The two troops fire laser bolts at Obi-Wan. Ah, ah. Qui-Gon deflects the bolts back, <laughs> and the staps blow up. Ah. One, two. Obi-Wan is exhausted and tries to catch his breath. <sighs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. Okay. Right. Sorry, Master. Water filled my weapon. Uh. Obi-Wan pulls out his burnt laser sword handle, and Qui-Gon inspects it as Jar Jar pulls himself out of the mud. Oh. Well, you forgot to turn your power off again, yeah. didn't you? <laughs> it won't take long to recharge, but this is a lesson I hope you've learned. <laughs> My young Padawan. <laughs> yes, Master. Okay. Oh, you saved mine again, eh? <laughs> uh, Who's this? Jar Jar. <laughs> Hi there, big fan, Who big fan, big fan. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Local. <laughs> Let's go before more of those droids show up. Muir? Muir? Did you speak? <laughs> Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon start to run. Different Jar Jar language. tries to keep up. Um, yeah. yeah. Excuse me, but... Um, <laughs> but the Moton Grande safe place would be Otagunga. Tis where I grew up. <laughs> Tis safe city. A city? <laughs> Can you take us there? Ah, well, on second thought, uh, no, not really. No! No, let me say it's, uh, it's kind of embarrassing, but um, my afraid my have been banished. Uh, my forgotten oh. their bosses would be terrible things to my. Terrible things if I go and back there. <laughs> Did you hear that? <laughs> <laughs> A pulsating sound is heard in the distance. That's the sound of a thousand terrible things <laughs> heading this way. When they find us, they will crush us and grind us into little pieces and then yes. blast us into oblivion. Yes. Oh, oblivion. You the point of the uh, well seen. Uh, this away. Hurry. Qui-Gon, Obi-Wan, and Jar Jar run into a murky lake and stop as Jar Jar tries to catch his breath. The transports are heard in the distance. <sighs> Much farther. Uh, we've uh, gone underwater, okie day. Uh, <laughs> I don't have web feet for nothing. <laughs> but uh, my warning you, Gunga's no like an outsider. Well, don't worry. This hasn't been our day for warm welcomes. <laughs> <laughs> Jar Jar jumps. Does a double somersault with a twist. And dives into the water. <laughs> Breath masks on, Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan wade in after him. Down they swim into the murky depths. In the distance, the glow of Otagunga, an underwater city made up of large bubbles, becomes more distinct. They approach the strange Art Nouveau habitat. Jar Jar swims ma magically through one of the bubble membranes which seals behind him. Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon follow. Gungans in the square scatter when they see the strange Jedi. Four guards armed with long electro poles ride two-legged cadus into the square. The guards, led by Captain Tarples, point their lethal poles at the dripping trio. Hello, Dolly, Captain Tarples. Me back. No again, Jar Jar. <laughs> you, sir, going to the bosses. Oh, you in big doo doo this time. <laughs> Captain Parfles gives Jar Jar a slight zap with his power pole. In the words of Stephanie Tanner, how rude! <laughs> Jar Jar jumps and moves off, followed by the two Jedi. The boss's boardroom has bubble walls with small lighted fish swimming around outside like moving stars. A long circular judge's bench filled with Gungan officials dominates the room. Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon stand facing Boss Nass, who sits on a bench higher than the others. You, sir, cannot be here. <laughs> the 
Wissa Armia Makeniks up at their teeth and no Wissa. That droid army is about to attack the Naboo. We must warn them. Wissa no like a Naboo. Unde no like a Usa. The Naboo think they so smarty than Usans. They think their brains are so big. <laughs> well, after those droids take control of the surface, they will come and take control of you. No, me! <laughs> so, no, think so. <laughs> me! So, scan talky with the Naboo. And no, Newton talky it the outlanders. Those are mechanics and no come here. They no none of Usan. <laughs> Well, you and the Naboo form a symbiote cir- mm -mm, nope. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> symbiont circle. That's fine. <laughs> you what were right the first time. Perfect. <laughs> okay. What happens when no of you will affect the other? You must understand this. We so wish you no know no and you so things outlander. And no we <laughs> so no caring about it the Naboo. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Then speed us on our way, yes? We's so gonna speed you on <laughs> we your way. We need a transport. We's so gonna give you on a bongo. The speedest way to the Naboot is going through the planet. Go. <laughs> now go. Thank you for your help. We go in peace. Master, what is a bongo? A okay. transport, I hope. I don't know. <laughs> The Jedi notice Jar Jar in chains to one side, waiting to hear his verdict. Qui-Gon stops. Jar Jar gives him a forlorn look. Ahem. 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 Duff setting you up, you know. Going through the planet car is uh, bad bombing. <laughs> Thank you, my friend. Uh, any help here would be hot. <laughs> We're short of time. Yes, we'll master. need a navigator to get us through the planet's core. This gunman might may be of help. What is to become of Jar Jar Binks here? <laughs> Binks broke in oh. the no come back law. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the books. <laughs> He's not to be puny. <laughs> He has been a great help to us. I hope the punishment will not be too severe. Boundy. I kind of hope it will. <laughs> Boundy done today. Ouch! <laughs> we uh, need a navigator to get us through the planet's core. I have saved Jar Jar Binks' life. He owes me what you call a life debt. Mm. Binks? You having a live play with this in Heeson? <laughs> Jar Jar nods and joins the Jedi. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Qui-Gon waves his hand. Your gods demand that his life belong to me now. Heeson leave Tia Yus Outlander. Be gone with him! Ah, <laughs> uh, count to me for Anadif. Better dead here than deader in the core. Ye gods, what's the me saying? <laughs> Underwater, a strange little submarine propels itself away from Mo'oto Gunga, leaving the glow of the settlement in the distance. Obi-Wan sits in the co-pilot's seat, and Jar Jar guides the craft. Ah, uh, this is new thing. Master, why do you keep dragging these pathetic life forms along with us? Here, take over. Uh, hey ho! Where are we for going? You are the navigator. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you dreaming me for hoping. Okay, well, just relax. The Force will guide us. Ooh, Maxi Big the Force Wallen, that smells stink a woof whip whip. <laughs> Why were you banished, Jar Jar? Well, it's a, it's a long tale, but a small part wanna be me for ooh, uh, clumsy. <laughs> they banished you because you were clumsy. Yeah, yeah, me for COVID, maybe one or two uh, dewy, leedy, bitty accidente, you'd say. Boom, the grasser, woohoo! Un crash at their bosses, hey, bibbler, uh, then, uh, you know, banish me. <laughs> Suddenly, there's a loud crash, and the little craft lurches to one side. Qui-Gon looks around and sees a huge, 
luminous OPC killer has hooked them with its long, gooey tongue. Full speed ahead! Instead of full ahead, Jar Jar jams the controls into reverse. <laughs> the sub flies into the mouth of the creature. Oh, give me the controls! Obi-Wan takes over the controls, and the OPC killer instantly releases the sub from its mouth. Woohoo! We for free! As the sub zooms away, they see a larger set of jaws munching on the hapless killer. The jaws belong to the incredible Sando Aqua Monster. Well, there's always a bigger fish. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Meanwhile, on the bridge of the Federation trip battleship, Newt and Rune stand before a hologram of Darth Sidious. The invasion is on schedule, my lord. I have the Senate bogged down in procedures. By the time this incident comes up for a vote, they will have no choice but to accept your control of the system. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> the Queen has great faith the Senate will side with her. Queen, Mama Dylan is young and naive. You will find controlling her will not be difficult. You have done well, Viceroy. Oh, thank you, my lord. <laughs> Darth Sidious fades away. Where'd he go? <laughs> hey, you didn't tell him about the missing jetty? Well, no need to report that to him, dummy. <laughs> Until we have something to report. <clears throat> Meanwhile, back in the sub, sparks are flying, water is leaking into the cabin, and the sound of the power drive drops. We're losing power. Ah! <laughs> Stay calm. We're not in trouble yet. What yet? Monsters out there like in Space Jam! <laughs> Leaking in here! All in thinking and no power? You not seen it? What are you thinking? We the A, the other, the That's how, folks! <laughs> in trouble! Power's back. <laughs> <laughs> the lights flicker on, revealing an ugly colo clawfish right in front of them. Monsters back! We the in trouble now! Relax. Relax. Qui-Gon puts his hand on Jar Jar's shoulder and Jar Jar relaxes into a coma. Well, you overdid it. <laughs> the Colo Clawfish leaps after the fleeing sub as it shoots out of the tunnel and into the waiting jaws of the Sando Aqua Monster. This is not good. We for dead yet? Oi, boy. <laughs> the sub narrowly avoids the deadly teeth of the Aqua Monster and the Colo Clawfish chasing them isn't so lucky. It is munched in half by the larger predator. The little sub continues to propel itself towards the surface, which is brightly lit. Woohoo! We flattooed it! <laughs> the waterfalls of Theed sparkle in the noonday sun. Queen Amidala, her handmaiden, Sio Bibble, and Captain Panaka are surrounded by 20 droids. Newt and Rune stand in the middle of the room. How will you explain this invasion to the Senate? Uh, the Nebu and the Federation will forge a treaty that will legitimize our occupation here. I've been assured it will be ratified by the Senate. I will not cooperate. Oh, now, now, your highness. <laughs> you are not going to like what we have in store for your people. In time, their suffering will persuade you to see our point of view. Commander? Processor. Roger, Roger. <laughs> <laughs> Queen Amidala, Padme, Captain Panaka, Sayo Bibble, and four guards are led out of the palace by ten battle droids. The plaza is filled with tanks and battle droids, which they pass on their way to the detention camp. Unbeknownst to them, Qui-Gon, Obi-Wan, and Jar Jar sneak across on a walkway above the plaza and jump from a balcony to begin an attack to rescue the queen. <sighs> Battle droids are cut down by the Jedi's flashing lightsabers until there is only one droid sergeant left. That sergeant starts to run, but is pulled back to Qui-Gon by the Force until finally he is dispatched by the Jedi. You guy, you the guy bomb bad. Your Highness, we are the ambassadors for the Supreme Chancellor. Your negotiations seem to have failed, Ambassador. Well... The negotiations never took place. Your Highness, we must make contact with the Republic. They knocked out all our communications. Do you have transports? In the main hangar, this way. Captain Panaka cracks open a side door to the central hangar. They see several Naboo sp spacecraft guarded by about 50 battle droids. Alarms can be heard in the distance. There's too many of them. No, 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 that won't be a problem. Your Highness, under the circumstances, I suggest you come to Coruscant with us. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. You're good. Yeah. You're good. You're good. You're good. Thank you, Ambassador. But my place is here, with my people. Well, well, they will kill you if you stay. They wouldn't dare! <laughs> they needed to sign a treaty to make this invasion of theirs legal. They can't afford to kill her. The situation here is not what it seems. There is something else behind all this, Your Highness. There is no logic in the Federation's move here. My feelings tell me they will destroy you. Please, your highness, reconsider. Our only hope is for the Senate to side with us. Senator Palpatine will need your help. <laughs> Man, getting past their blockades is impossible, your highness. Any attempt to escape will be dangerous. Your highness, I will stay here and do what I can. They will have to retain the Council of Governors in order to maintain control. But you... <laughs> Must leave. <laughs> the queen turns to Padme. Either choice presents a great risk. We are brave, your highness. <laughs> <laughs> if you are to leave, your highness, it must be now. And I will plead our case before the Senate. Be careful, governor. The door opens to the main hangar. Qui-Gon, Obi-Wan, Jar Jar, Captain Panaka, two guards and three handmaidens, followed by Queen Amidala, <laughs> head for a sleek chrome spaceship. We need to free those pilots. Mm. I'll take care of that. Obi-Wan heads toward a group of captured pilots. Qui-Gon, the Queen, Captain Panaka, Jar Jar, and the rest of the group approach the guards at the ramp of the Naboo craft. Hey, where are you going? I'm ambassador for the Supreme Chancellor, and I'm taking those people to Coruscant. <laughs> Nah, that doesn't make any difference. Nah, you're under arrest. The droid guard draws his weapon, but before any of the droids can fire, they're cut down. Other guards run to their aid. Obi-Wan attacks the guards. Around the pilots, Qui-Gon stands fighting off droids as the others rush on board the spacecraft. After everyone has made it onto the ship, Qui-Gon jumps on board. Ha! The sleek spacecraft speeds away from the planet of Naboo and heads for the deadly Federation blockade. The pilot, Rick Ollier, navigates towards the massive battleship Qui-Gon and Captain Panaka watch. Our communications are jammed. <laughs> <laughs> Jar Jar is led into a low, cramped doorway by Obi-Wan. Now stay here and keep out of trouble. And Obi-Wan closes the door. Not Jar Jar looks around and sees a long row of five short, dome-topped R2 units. Hello, boyos. <laughs> There you go. If I want to go, a long go trip, hey? <laughs> There's a blockade. A shower of bolts strike the cruiser as one lucky shot hits the shield generator. The shield generator's been hit, man. <laughs> <laughs> the droids are activated and proceed towards the out doorway. One bumps into Jar Jar. Oh, how rude. <laughs> the blue droid joins his three companions at fixing the shield generator. One of the droids is shot. We're losing droids fast. <laughs> Without shields, we'll be sitting ducks. Shields are gone, man. <laughs> Two more droids are destroyed, and the lone blue droid plugs in a cord. Bower's back! A little droid did it! <laughs> he, he bypassed the main power drive. Deflector shield up at maximum. <laughs> the, the, lone, the lone blue droid finishes his repairs and goes back into the ship. The Naboo spacecraft races away from the Federation battleship. Man, there is not enough power to get us to Coruscant. Dude, the hyperdrive is leaky. <laughs> we'll have to land somewhere to refuel and repair the ship. Yeah, Master, Tatooine. It's small, out of the way, poor. <laughs> <laughs> That's not, it's not very nice. <laughs> the Trade Federation has no presence there. How can you be sure? Well, it's controlled by the huts. The huts? It's risky, <laughs> but there's no alternative. You can't take Her Royal Highness there. The huts are gangsters. And I'm no gangster. <laughs> if they discovered her... It would be no different than if we landed on a system controlled by the Federation. Except... The Huts aren't looking for her, which gives us an advantage. 
Captain Panaka takes a deep breath in frustration. (gasps) (laughs) And the Naboo spacecraft races away. Newt and Rune sit around a conference table with a hologram of Darth Sidious. Okay. Uh, We control all the cities in the north and are searching for any other settlements. (laughs) Hmm. Destroy all high-ranking officials, Viceroy. Slowly, quietly, and Queen Amadilla, has she signed the treaty? Who? She has disappeared, my lord. One Naboo cruiser got past the blockade. Viceroy, find her. I want that treaty signed. Oh, my lord, it's impossible to locate the ship. It's out of our range. Not for a Sith. A second Sith Lord appears behind Darth Sidious. Oh, wait, wait, hang on. Bobby. Bobby. No, 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 Bobby, did you not? Wait, Bobby. Hang on. Bobby. Wait, Bobby. Bobby, did you? Bobby, we gave you the script. Bobby Bobby Corinne was going to play Darth Maul. It's in the... I spent $700 on makeup. (laughs) (laughs) Corinne, Corinne, sit down. Is it okay? Sorry. I'm sorry. All right, go ahead, Bobby. You can do it, Bobby. You got to do it. Thank you, Corinne. This is my apprentice, Lord Mar. He will find your lost ship. Yes, my lord. The hologram fades off. (laughs) Oh, boy, this is getting out of hand. (laughs) Now there are two of them. We should not have made this bargain. What will happen when the Jedi become aware of these two Sith Lords? I don't want to be here. Bye. (laughs) Back on the ship, Qui-Gon, Obi-Wan, Captain Panaka, and the little blue droid stand before Queen Amidala and her handmaidens. An extremely well put together little droid. (laughs) Without a doubt, it saved the ship as well as our lives. It is to be commended. What is its number? The little droid lets out a series of bleeps. <laughs> Captain Panaka l- leans over and scrapes some dirt off of the side of the droid and reads the number. R2, D2, Highness. <laughs> Thank you, R2, D2. <laughs> <laughs> you have proven to be very loyal, Padme. Yep. <laughs> Clean this droid up best you can. It deserves our gratitude. Continue, Captain. Captain Panaka looks nervously to Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon. Your Highness, we are heading for a remote planet called Tatooine. It is a system (laughs) far beyond the reach of the Trade Federation. There There we'll be able to make needed repairs, then travel on to Coruscant. Your Highness, Tatooine. Tatooine is very dangerous. It's controlled by an alliance of gangs called the Huts. It's kind of worse than the Crips. <laughs> I do not agree with the Jedi on this. You must trust my judgment, Your Highness. A short time later, Padme sits in the main area cleaning R2-D2, the brave little astro droid. Jar Jar pops out of an open door. Woohoo! <laughs> Both Padme and R2 (laughs) jump and let out a little scream. Ah. (laughs) The Gungan is embarrassed that he frightened them. Sorry, I'm I'm not that ugly, but, you know, (laughs) no meaning to scare you, so. That's all right. I, uh, scuffered only back there, uh, needn't it? Oh, thank you. Yeah, this little guy's quite a mess. Mifa Jaja Binks, nice to meet you. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, I'm Padme. I attend Her Highness. You're a a Gungan, aren't (laughs) you? How'd, how'd you end up here with us? 
Oh no, my no, me the day, startin' pity okey day with a brisky morning munchin', you know? <laughs> then, boom! Genshin Barry skewered and grabbing that Jedi before Misa knowing it. <laughs> Pow! Misa here. I... Getting Barry Barry skewered. R2 beeps a sympathetic no, beep. <laughs> In the cockpit, Obi Wan, Qui Gon, and Captain Panaka watch over Rick O'Lee's shoulder. A large yellow planet appears directly ahead. So that's it. <laughs> Tatooine. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, there's a settlement, uh, like a spaceport. I used to smoke out there. <laughs> I knew a girl named Deborah. <laughs> anyway, that's what it looks uh, like. <laughs> keep going. Um, <laughs> Land near the outskirts. We don't want to attract any attention. The Naboo spacecraft lands in the desert in a swirl of dust. The spaceport of most Espa is seen in the distance. Obi-Wan is hoisting the hyperdrive out of a floor panel. Jar Jar rushes up to him and falls to his knees. <laughs> Obi-Wan, fire, please. Mesa, no go. Sorry, Qui-Gon's right. You'll make things less obvious. <laughs> Jar <laughs> Jar Jar walks back to R2 in the hallway as Qui-Gon, dressed as a farmer, enters the main area. The hyperdrive generator's gone. We'll need a new one. No, don't let them send any transmissions. Be wary. I sense a disturbance in the force. Ooh, I feel it also, oh. Master. <laughs> Qui-Gon goes into the hallway to meet up with R2 and Jar Jar. They head to the exit ramp and start their trek across the desert toward the city of Mos Espa. Oh, so hot. <laughs> Did the sun done murder to the skin? Wait, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Wait. From the spaceship, Captain Panaka and Padme run toward them. Qui-Gon stops as they catch up. Padme is dressed in rough peasant's garb. Her, her Highness commands you to take her handmaiden with you. She wishes for her to observe the local... No more commands from Her Highness today, Captain. This spaceport is not going to be pleasant. <laughs> <laughs> the Queen wishes it. <laughs> she is curious about the planet. Okay. Yeah, and, like, you know, I've been, like, trained in defense and stuff, so I can, you know, I can... I can, I can like, take care of myself, so... <laughs> Don't make me go back and tell her you refuse. No. <laughs> I don't have time to argue, but this is not a good idea. Stay close to me, yes? The little group walks down the main street of Mos Espa. They pass dangerous-looking citizens of all types. Padme looks around in awe at this exotic environment. Uh, it's moisture farms for the most part, but also a few indigenous tribes and scavengers. The few spaceports like this one are havens <clears throat> for those who do not wish to be foul. Hey, like us. <laughs> <laughs> Jar Jar is in a constant state of panic. Uh, R2 uh, whistles along with perfect confidence. Uh, this is very, very bad. Jar Jar steps in ooze. Ow. I just bought these for the table read. <laughs> <laughs> oh, icky, icky goo! The group comes up to a little plaza surrounded by several junk spaceship dealers. Right. We'll try one of the smaller dealers. They head for a little junk shop that has a huge pile of broken spaceships stacked up behind it. They enter the dingy junk shop and are greeted by Watto, a pudgy blue <laughs> alien who flies on short little wings like a hummingbird. What do you want? <laughs> I need parts for a J-Type 327 Nubian. Oh, yes, yeah, oh, no, yeah, Nubian. <laughs> we have a lot of that. What the kind of junk, a boy? Get in here now. My droid here has a readout of what I need. A disheveled boy, Anakin Skywalker, runs in from the junkyard. <laughs> He's about nine years old, very dirty, and dressed in rags. Watto raises a hand and Anakin flinches. What, what took you so long? 
wrong. I was cleaning the bin, like you said. <laughs> oh. Never mind. Watch the store. I've got some selling to do here. So, <laughs> let me take it out the back. Me, you to find the what you need. R2 and Qui-Gon follow Watto towards the junkyard, leaving Jar Jar with Padme and the young boy Anakin. Jar Jar picks up a gizmo, trying to figure out its purpose. Qui-Gon takes the part out of his hand and puts it back. No, don't touch anything. Jar Jar makes a rude face to Qui-Gon's back and sticks out his long tongue. Anakin sits on the counter, pretending to clean a part, staring at Padme. She is the most beautiful creature he has ever seen in his life. Padme... Padme is a little embarrassed. Padme is a little embarrassed by his stare, but she musters up an amused smile. Finally, he gets the courage to speak. Are, are, are you an angel? What? <laughs> an angel. I've heard the deep space pilots talk about him. They live on the moons of Diego, I think. They're the most beautiful creatures in the universe. They're good and kind and so pretty they make even the most hardened spice pirates cry. Oh, I don't know. I've, I've never heard of angels. Uh, you must be one. <laughs> Maybe you just don't know it. <laughs> Little boy. <laughs> You're a child. You're a young child. Uh, how do you know so much? No, uh, I, I listen to all the traders and pilots who come through here. I'm a pilot, you know? And someday I'm gonna fly away from this place. You're a pilot? All my life. How many years is that? <laughs> <laughs> huh? Sorry, have you been here long? Uh, since I was pretty little, three, I think, okay. my mom and I were sold to Gardula the Hut. Oh, God. But she lost us betting on pod races. To Watto was a lot better master than Gardula, I think. <laughs> Thank you. You're, a, <laughs> you're a, a, a slave. I'm a person! Okay. My name is Anakin. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. I'm, so, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't fully understand. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is a strange world to me. Oh, you're... You're a strange girl to me. <laughs> Jar Jar pushes the nose on what appears to be a little droid, and it instantly comes to life. It grows arms and legs and starts marching around, knocking over everything. Jar Jar holds onto it, but he can't stop it. Hit the nose! Jar, Jar Jar hits the nose, and the droid collapses back into its original state. Anakin and Padme laugh. Anakin watches Padme straighten her hair. Behind the shop, Watto reads a small portable monitor he's holding. He stands before a hyperdrive. Uh, here it is, a T-14 hyperdrive generator. The luck, I'm the only one hereabouts who has one. But he might as well buy a new ship. It would be cheaper. I think saying of which, how's he gonna pay for all of this? I have 20,000 Republic dotteries. <laughs> Republic credits? <laughs> Republic credits are no good out here. I need something more real. Well, I don't have anything else, but credits will do fine. No, they won't. <laughs> credits will do fine. Uh, uh, no, they won't. <laughs> what do you think? You're some kind of Jedi? Waving, <laughs> waving your hand around like that? I'm a Tartarian. My tricks don't work on me. Only money. <laughs> no money, no parts, no deal. No shirt, no shoes, no service. <laughs> and no one else has a T-14 hyperdrive, I promise you that. Back inside, Jar Jar pulls a part out of a stack of parts to inspect it, and they all come tumbling down. He struggles to catch them, only to knock more down. Anakin and Padme are oblivious. It wouldn't have lasted so long if I wasn't such a good pilot. I'm making my own droid. We're leaving. <laughs> Jar, Jar, <laughs> Jar Jar follows Qui-Gon. Padme gives Anakin a loving look. I'm uh, glad I met you. <laughs> uh, what is it? Anakin. Anakin, got it. Okay. Anakin Skywalker. <laughs> and and we all know that I am Padme 
Naberry. <laughs> Pad- Padme Naberry turns and Anakin looks sad as he watches her leave. Okay. I- I'm glad I met you too. <laughs> <laughs> Wano enters the junkyard, shaking his head. Oh, Outlanders, they think because we live so far from the center, we don't know nothing. Seem nice to me. Oh, go clean the racks, and then you can go home. Give me! <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, Qui-Gon, Archu, Jar Jar, and Padme have found a quiet spot between two buildings. The busy street beyond is filled with dangerous-looking creatures. Qui-Gon is talking on his comm link while Jar Jar nervously watches the street. Obi-Wan is in the main hold of the Naboo craft. Obi-Wan, you're sure there isn't anything of value left on board? A few containers of supplies, the Queen's wardrobe, uh, not enough for you to barter with. Not the amounts you're talking about. All right, all right. Another solution will present itself. I'll check back. Qui-Gon puts his comlink away and starts out on the main street. Jar Jar grab, grabs his arm. Oh, none again. The being fair about crazy. We should be robbed and crunched. Not likely. We have nothing of value. That's our problem. Qui-Gon, Padme, and Jar Jar, and R2, move out into the street. Jar Jar is walking behind the others. They walk out into an outdoor cafe filled with a rough gang of aliens, one of which is especially ugly, Sebulba, a spider-like creature. Jar Jar stops for a moment in front of a stall, selling dead frogs hanging on a wire. He looks around to see if anyone is looking, then sticks out his tongue and gets hold of one, pulling it into his mouth. (laughs) Unfortunately, the frog is tied tightly to the wire. The vendor suddenly appears. Hey! (laughs) (laughs) That'll be seven (laughs) truggets. Jar Jar opens his mouth in surprise, and the frog snaps away, ricochets around the market, and lands in Sebulba's soup, splashing it. As Jar Jar moves away from the vendor, Sebulba jumps up on the table and grabs the hapless Gungan. You! Hello, my baby. Hello, my lovely. <laughs> Hello, my ragtime girl. Send me your... Co- <laughs> Who? Who for me, for? <laughs> Is this yours? Sebulba holds the frog up to the Gungan threateningly. Several other creatures start to gather. Sebulba shoves Jar Jar to the ground. The Gungan oh. desperately tries to scramble to safety. Why, Mifa, always the one? Because you're afraid. <laughs> Jar Jar turns to see Anakin pushing his way next to him. The boy stands up to Sebulba in a very self assured way. Careful, Sebulba. This one's very connected. <laughs> Sebulba stops his assault on Jar Jar and turns to Anakin. Connected. What do you mean, slave? As in hut. Big time outlander, this one. I'd hate to see you dice before we race again. Uh, I didn't know that. Uh, next time we race, Wormo, it'll be the end of you. If you weren't a slave, I'd squash you right now. Yeah. Be a pity if you had to pay for me. <laughs> yeah. Wait. <laughs> Qui-Gon, Padme, and R2 arrive. Hi. Your buddy here was about to be turned into orange goo. He picked a fight with a Doug, an especially dangerous Doug called Sebulba. No, sir, no, sir. Mitha hate crunching. That's the last thing Mitha want. Nevertheless, the boy is right. You are heading for trouble. Thank you, my young friend. Padme looks at Anakin and smiles. He smiles back. They start walking down the crowded street. (laughs) I tell you, Mitha doing nothing. (laughs) Fear attracts the fearful. He was trying to overcome his fear by squashing you. Be less afraid. And that works for you? To a point. Anakin and the group stop at a fruit stand run by a jolly but very poor old lady named Jira. (laughs) (laughs) How are you feeling today, Jira? The heat's never been kind to me, you know, (laughs) Anakin. Well, guess what? I found that cooling unit I've been searching for. It's pretty beat up, but I'll have it fixed up for you in no time. I promise. You're a fine, fine boy, Anna. (laughs) I'll take four pallies today. You'll like these. Anakin reaches in his pocket and comes up with three coins. He drops one. Qui-Gon picks it up, revealing in the moment his lightsaber. Whoops, I thought I had more. Uh, Make that three. (laughs) I'm not hungry. Oh. Gracious, my bones are aching. <laughs> Storm's coming on, Annie. 
You better get home quick. Well, do you have shelter? We'll head back to our ship. Is it far? On the outskirts. You'll never reach the outskirts in time. Sandstorms are very, very dangerous. Come with me, hurry! The wind is blowing hard as Qui-Gon, Jar Jar, and Padme follow Anakin down the street and into a slave hovel. Qui-Gon, Jar Jar, R2, and Padme enter a small living space. Mom! Mom! <laughs> I'm home! Ah, uh, not bad. Uh, Dissin Coven. <laughs> Anakin's mother, Shmi Skywalker, a warm, friendly woman of 40, enters from her work area and is startled to see the room full of people. Oh my, Annie, what's this? These are my friends, Mom. This is Padme and... Gee, I don't know any of your names. <laughs> uh, I'm Qui-Gon Jinn, and this is... Jar Jar Binks. Hello. Oh, and our, and our droid, R2-D2. Yes. Oh, I'm, yeah. I'm building a droid. You want to see? Anakin, <laughs> why are they here? A sandstorm, Mom. Listen. <laughs> sand, sand. Clearly, your son was kind enough to offer us shelter. Come on. Let me show you 3PO. Anakin leads Padme into the other room. R2 follows, beeping all the way. <laughs> Qui-Gon takes five small capsules from his utility belt and hands them to Shmi. I have enough food for a meal? Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm worried if I was abrupt, I never get used to Anakin's surprises. Well, he's a very, very special boy. Special. Yes, I know. <laughs> In his room, Anakin shows off his android, which is lying on his workbench. There's, <laughs> there's one eye in the head, the body, the arms, and legs have no outer coverings. Isn't he great? He's not finished yet. He's wonderful, yeah. <laughs> no, he's really good. You, yeah. you really like him? Yes. Well, he's a protocol droid. To help mom, watch. Anakin pushes a switch, and the droid sits up. Anakin rushes around, grabs an eye, and puts it in one of the sockets. <laughs> How may I serve you? You know what? He's perfect. Oh. <laughs> a plus. Thank you. Yeah. You know, when the storm's over, you can see my racer. I'm building a pod racer. Padme smiles at his enthusiasm. <laughs> yeah. R2 lets out a flurry of beeps and whistles. Meanwhile, back on the ship, Amidala, her handmaidens, and Obi-Wan watch a very bad transmission of a Sio Bibble hologram. I, I, I cut off all food supplies until you return. Uh, uh, can, can you eat, uh, go outside? Uh, that toy is catastrophic. Uh, it's, uh, uh, plug it in. <laughs> We must bow to their wishes, your highness. Please tell us what to do. If you can hear us, your highness, you must contact me. Beep. So it's a trick. <laughs> <laughs> send no reply, send no transmission of any kind. Back at Anakin's house, Qui-Gon listens to his comm link. The queen's upset, but absolutely no reply was sent. Well, it sounds like bait to establish a connection trace. What if it's true and people are dying? Either way, we're running out of time. <laughs> At the same time, on a balcony on Coruscant, Darth Sidious is talking to a hologram of Darth Maul as he looks out over the vast city. Tatooine is sparsely populated. <laughs> if the trace was correct, I'll find them quickly. <laughs> 
safe against the Jedi first. You will then have no difficulty taking the Queen back. At last we reveal ourselves to the Jedi. Wait. At she, last. she needs to sign the treaty. <laughs> At last we will reveal ourselves <laughs> to the Jedi. At last. <laughs> At last we will have our revenge. The treaty. You have been well trained, my young apprentice. They Thank. will be no match for you. It is too late for them to stop us now. Everything is going as planned. The Republic will soon be in my command. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the giant sandstorm engulfs the town, including the Naboo spaceship, on the outskirts of the city center where Watto's shop is and the slave quarters where drifts of sand begin building up against Anakin's house. Qui-Gon, Anakin, Shmi, Jar Jar, and Padme are seated around a makeshift table, having dinner as the wind howls outside. Jar Jar slurps his soup rather loudly. Everyone looks at him. He turns a little brighter red. Oh, my dear. Oh. All slaves have transmitters placed inside their bodies everywhere, somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. I've been working on a scanner to try and locate them, but no luck. Any attempt to escape. And they blow you up. Poof. <laughs> How rude. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm just like, I, I can't believe there's still slavery in the galaxy. That's what's sort of wild for me right now. Because um, the, the Republic's anti-slavery laws. The Republic doesn't exist out here. We must survive on our own. Have you ever seen a pod race? I'm sorry. <laughs> Jar Jar snatches some food from a bowl at the other end of the table with his tongue. Qui-Gon gives him a dirty look. They have pod racing on Malastar. On Malastar. Very fast, very dangerous. And I'm the only human who can do it. Okay. <laughs> Mom, what? I'm not bragging. It's true. Watto says he never heard of a human being doing it. You must have Jedi reflexes if you race pods. Jar Jar attempts to snare another bit of food from the bowl with his tongue, but Qui-Gon, in a flash, grabs it between his thumb and forefinger. Jar Jar is startled. Don't do that again. Okay, 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 okay. Jar Jar tries to acknowledge with some silly mumbling. Qui-Gon lets go of his tongue, and it snaps back into Jar Jar's mouth. I, I, uh... Oh, I was wondering something. <laughs> what? Well, uh, <laughs> you're a Jedi Knight, right? <laughs> Aren't you? What makes you think that? I saw your laser sword. Only a Jedi carry that kind of weapon. Perhaps I killed a Jedi and stole it from him. <laughs> I don't think so. No one can kill a Jedi Knight. I wish that were so. I had a dream. <laughs> I had a dream I was a Jedi. I come back here, freed all slaves. Have you come to free us? No, I'm afraid not. <laughs> oh, damn it. Oh, I think you have. <laughs> I mean, why else would you be here? I can see there's no fooling you. Yes. <laughs> <sighs> you mustn't let anyone know about us. We're on our way to Coruscant, to the central system in the Republic, on a very important mission, and it must be kept secret. Coruscant? Wow. Shit, Coruscant. <laughs> 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 You're doing great. You're doing great. Oh, bless you, bless you. <laughs> well, tell me this. 
<laughs> How did you end up here in the outer rim? Mm. Oh, I have a line now. Uh, our ship was damaged, and we're stranded here until we could repair it. Oh, I can help. I can fix anything. Oh, I believe you can. But our first job is to acquire the parts we need. Uh, with no, you know, cha-ching, cash, moolah to trade. <clears throat> These junk dealers must have a weakness of some kind. Oh, gambling. Everything here revolves around betting on those awful races. Yes, pod racing. Greed can be a powerful ally, if it's used properly. I, I've built a racer. It's the fastest ever. Oh. There's a big race tomorrow on Bunta Eve. You could enter my pod. I mean, it's all but finished. Anakin, settle down. <laughs> Watto won't let you. Watto doesn't know I built it. You could, you could make him think it's yours, and you could get him to let me pilot it for you. I don't want you to race, Annie. It's awful. I die every time that Watto makes you do it. Oh, but Mom, <laughs> I love it. And they need help. They're in trouble. The prize money would more than pay for the parts they need. We fit in pretty bad sh uh, goo. <laughs> Your mother's right. Is there anyone friendly to the pub Republic who might be able to help us? <sighs> we have to help them, Mom! You said that this biggest problem in the universe is that no one helps each other. No, Anakin, don't! Jar Jar belches. <laughs> and there is a silence for a moment as they eat. I'm sure Qui-Gon doesn't want to put your son in danger. We'll, we'll find another way. No, Annie's right. There is no other way. It's quick. <laughs> so, uh, I may not like it, but he can help you. Yeah. He was meant to help you. Is that a yes? That's a yes! <laughs> After the storm has passed, vendors and street people clean up the mess and rebuild their food stalls. Jar Jar sits on a box in front of Wado's parts shop, watching all the activity with growing nervousness. R2 is standing next to him. Padme stops Qui-Gon as he is about to enter the shop. Are you sure about this? I mean, trusting our fate to, a, again, a very small boy that we hardly know, <laughs> the queen will not approve. The queen does not need to know. Well, I... Don't approve. <laughs> so. Qui Gon turns and starts into the shop where he finds Wado and Anakin in the middle of an animated discussion in Huttese. Patagabulia! Lobata! Patoki Makichilia! Chibanyo! Banyo! Hey! The boy tells me you want to sponsor him in the race. You can't afford parts. How can you do this? Not on Republic Credits, I think! <laughs> Okay, you have a tums. <laughs> my sh my ship will be the entry fee. Qui Gon pulls a small object out of his pocket, and a hologram of the Naboo spacecraft appears about a foot long in front of Watto. He studies it. Oh, oh not bad, not bad, a Nubian. <laughs> It's in good order, except for the parts we need. But what would the boy ride? He smashed up my pod in the last race. It'll take some time to fix it. I, it wasn't my fault, really. Sebulba flashed me with his vent ports. I actually saved the pod, mostly. Oh, that you did. <laughs> the boy is good, no doubts there. <laughs> I have acquired a part in a game of chance. The fastest ever built. Oh, I hope you didn't kill anyone I know for it. <laughs> so, hmm, okay, you supply the part and the entry fee, I supply the boy. We split the winnings 50-50 at the end. 50-50? <laughs> if it's going to be 50-50, I suggest you front the cash for the entry. If we win, you keep all the winnings, <laughs> minus the cost of the parts I need. If we lose, you keep my ship. Either way, you win. Oh, deal! Aye. 
A friend is a foolish one to me. Shut up! <laughs> Later, Obi-Wan stands outside of the Naboo spacecraft, speaking into his comlink. Qui-Gon is on the back porch of the hovel. Everything's fine! <laughs> If this plan fails, Master, we could be stuck here for a long well, a ship time. With, yes, a ship without a power supply will not get us anywhere. And there is something about this boy. Qui-Gon puts the comlink away as Shmi comes onto the porch. Padme, Anakin, Jar Jar, and R2 work on the engines of the pod racer in the courtyard below. You should be very proud of your son. He gives without any thought of reward. Yes, he knows nothing of greed. He has He a- has... Special powers. Yes. He can see things before they happen. That's why he appears to have such quick reflexes. It is a Jedi trait. Oh. Well, he deserves better than a slave's life. The Force is unusually strong with him. That much is clear. Who was his father? Um, there's no father that I know of. I, I carried him, I gave him birth. I, I can't explain what happened. Uh, can you help him? <laughs> I'm afraid not. Had he been born in the Republic, we would have identified him earlier, and he would have become a Jedi, no doubt. He has the way. But it's too late for him now. He's too old. <laughs> Kitster, a young boy about Anakin's age. <laughs> Seek, a boy of ten. Ami, a girl of six. And Wald, a Greedo type. <laughs> six years old, joins Anakin, Jar Jar R2, and Padme securing some wiring. Wow, a real astro droid. How'd you get so lucky? <laughs> that is the half of it. I'm entered in the Bunta race tomorrow. What? With this? Just go no joker, Annie. <laughs> oh, you've been working on that thing for years. <laughs> it's never gonna work. <laughs> Come on, let's go play ball. <laughs> Keep it up, Annie, and you're gonna be bug squash. <laughs> Seek Wald and Ame take off. Jar Jar's fiddling with one of the energy binder plates. Oh. Hey, Jar Jar. Uh-huh. Stay away from those energy binders. <laughs> Who? Mifa? <laughs> if your hand gets caught in that beam, it will go numb for hours. Jar Jar peeks at the energy plates. It makes a little electronic pop, zaps him in the mouth, and jumps back. Jar Jar tries to say something, but his mouth is numb and his words are garbled. <laughs> Ooh, that's for my bingo outcho, hey! <laughs> what? Annie, you don't even know if this thing will run. It will! Well, I think it's time we found out. Use this power charge. Yes, sir! Qui-Gon approaches the group and gives Anakin a small battery. Jar Jar gets his hand caught in the afterburner and tries to tell Anakin, but can't get words out that make sense. Anakin jumps into the little capsule behind the two giant engines. He pulls the power back into the dashboard. Everyone backs away, except for Jar Jar, who calls for help. Finally, Padme frees him, and the engines ignite with a roar. Everyone cheers. Shmi, watching from the porch, smiles sadly. Yay! <laughs> Later, Anakin sits on the balcony rail of his hovel as Qui-Gon tends to a cut. The boy leans back to look at the vast blanket of stars in the sky. Sit still, Annie. Let me clean this cut. Oh, there's so many. Do they all have a system of planets? Most of them. Has anyone been to them all? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> oh, not likely. <laughs> well, I want to be the first one to see them all. Out! <laughs> Qui-Gon wipes a patch of blood off Anakin's arm. There. Good as new. Thanks. Qui-Gon scrapes Anakin's blood into a comlink chip. Uh, what are you doing? (laughs) (laughs) I'm just 
checking your blood for infection. Uh, I've never seen... Annie, right. I'm not going to tell you again. Go on, bye-bye. You have a big day tomorrow. Good night. <laughs> Anakin rolls his eyes and runs into the hovel. Qui-Gon takes the bloodstained chip and inserts it into a comlink, then calls Obi-Wan. Obi-Wan. Yes, Master? Make an analysis of this blood sample I'm sending you. Okay, wait a minute. I need a midi-chlorian count. All right. Ah, okay. Yes, I've got it. <laughs> what are your readings? Um, something must be wrong with this transmission. Well, here's a signal check. Strange. The transmission seems to be in good order, but the readings off the charts, over 20,000... <sighs> That's it, then. <laughs> uh, even Master Yoda doesn't have a midichlorian count that high. No Jedi has. So... What? <laughs> what? What does it mean? What I'm not does sure. It mean? I'm not sure. <laughs> The Jedi Knights look up and sees Shmi in the doorway watching him. Embarrassed, she goes back into the kitchen while Qui-Gon ponders the situation. Knight on Tatooine. The sinister-looking Sith spacecraft lands on top of the desert mesa at dusk, scattering a herd of banthas. Darth Maul walks to the edge of the mesa and studies the landscape with a pair of electric binoculars. He picks out the light of three different cities in the distance, then pushes buttons on his electronic armband. Six football-sized probe droids float out of the ship and head off in three different directions towards the cities. Darth Maul stands on the mesa and watches them through his electro binoculars. As the twin suns rise, R2 is busy painting the racing pod. Anakin is asleep, and Padme passes R2. I hope you're about finished. R2 whistles a positive reply. Padme goes over to Anakin, and he looks very vulnerable as he sleeps. <laughs> she watches him and then touches him on the cheek. Anakin wakes up, <laughs> yawns, and looks at her, a little puzzled. Ugh. You're in my dream. <laughs> Oh, you, you were leading a huge army into battle. I hope not. I, I hate fighting, yeah. Uh, your mother wants you to come in and clean up. We have to leave soon. I won't be long. Where's Qui-Gon? Uh, he and Jar Jar left already. They're with Watto at the arena. Oh. The hangar is a large building with a dozen or so pod racers being readied for the race. Alien crews and pilots rush about, making last-minute fixes on their vehicles. Watto, Qui-Gon, and Jar Jar walk through the activity. I want to see your spaceship the moment the race is over. Oh, patience. Patience, my blue friend. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have your winnings before the sun sets, and we'll be far away from here. Mm. <laughs> Not if your ship belongs to me, I think. I warn you, no funny business. Oh, my God. You don't think Anakin will win? Oh, well, don't get me wrong. Oh, I have a great faith in the boy. He's a credit to your race, but the uh, there is going to win, I think. I'm out of breath. <laughs> and why? He always wins. <laughs> I'm betting heavily on Sebulba. <laughs> I'll take that bet. What? What do you mean? I'll wager my new racing pod against, say, the boy and his mother. Oh, a pod for slaves? I don't think so. Hmm. Well, perhaps just one. Uh, the mother, maybe. The boy is not for sale. Ah, the boy is small. He can't be worth much. Uh, for the fastest pod ever built? <laughs> Both or no bet? Pods are worth two slaves, not by a long shot. One slave or nothing. The boy, then. Well, let's fate decide. <laughs> Blue eats the boy. Red, he's a mother. Mm. Watto pulls a small cube from his pocket and tosses it down. Qui-Gon lifts his hand slightly and it turns blue. Oh! <laughs> Qui-Gon smiles, and Watto is angry. You won a small toss out the lander, but you won the win the race, so it makes a little difference. 
Anakin and Padme enter the hangar on an EOP, pulling an engine. Kitster, on the other EOP, is pulling another engine. With 3PO walking alongside, our two trundles behind, pulling the pod with Shmi sitting in it. Watto passes Anakin as he leaves. Better stop your friends betting or I'll end up holding him too. <laughs> What do you mean by that? I will tell you later. <laughs> oh my! Space travel sounds rather perilous. I can assure you with no sense of foreboding irony that um, you'll never get me on one of those dreadful ships. <laughs> this is so withered. I'm sure you'll do it this time, Annie. Do what? Finish the race, of course. Oh, just, wait a minute. You've never won a race? No. Whoa. Uh, not exactly. Not, wait, not even finish. Well, but, but, started. What? <laughs> Kid, Kidster's right. I will finish this time. Of course you will. And he does. <laughs> <laughs> Afterwards, several aliens leave Watto's box, laughing and counting their money. Watto sees Qui-Gon standing in the doorway. You! You swindled me! You knew the boy was going to win! Somehow you knew it! I lost everything! Oh. <laughs> oh, whenever you gamble, my friend, eventually you'll lose. Bring the parts to the main hangar. I will come by your shop later so you can release the boy. Oh. I can't have him. It wasn't a fair bet. Would you like to discuss it with the Hots? I'm sure they can settle this. No, no, I want a mo no more of your tricks. You take him. Uh, what are you gonna do? <laughs> <laughs> That's in the script. We want to be clear. That was in the script. <laughs> In the hangar, Jar Jar gives Anakin a great hug. Then Padme gives him a hug. Then Shmi. Then... Oh, gee, enough of this. <laughs> oh, it's so wonderful, Annie. You've brought hope to those who have none. I'm so very proud of you. We owe you everything. Oh, just feeling this good was worth it. <laughs> <laughs> Padme, Jar Jar, let's go. We've got to get these parts back to the ship. They stop in front of the sleek Naboo spacecraft. Obi-Wan comes out of the ship and joins them. Start getting this hyperdrive generator installed. I'm going back. Some unfinished business. I won't be long. Why do I have a sense we've picked up another pathetic life form? It's the boy who's responsible for getting those parts. Back in the slave quarters, <laughs> Anakin and another boy are rolling around on the floor fighting. About a dozen or so kids are standing around them, yelling. Suddenly, a long shadow is cast over the two boys. They stop fighting and look up. Qui-Gon is towering above them. What's this? He said I cheated. Did you? No! Do you still think he cheated? Yes. Well, Annie, you know the truth. You will have to tolerate his opinion. Fighting won't change it. <laughs> <laughs> Qui-Gon moves off down the street. Anakin follows the other boy, wanders over to Wald, who has been watching the goings-on. Keep this up, Greedo, and you're going to come to a bad end. Oh. Farther... <laughs> Greedo, everyone. Farther down the street, Qui-Gon and Anakin head toward Anakin's hovel. Qui-Gon takes a handful of credits from beneath his poncho and hands them to the boy. These are yours. We sold the pod. Yes! <laughs> Mom, he sold the pod! Look at all the money we have! Oh my goodness, that's wonderful! I know. And Anakin has been freed. <laughs> what? You're no longer a slave. <laughs> did, you, did you hear that, Mom? <laughs> Was that part of the prize or what? <laughs> well, let's just say Watto has learned an important lesson about gambling. <laughs> Now you can make your dreams come true, Annie. You're free. Yes! <laughs> uh, will you take him with you? Is he to become a Jedi? Our meeting was not a coincidence. Nothing happens by accident. You are strong with the Force, but you may not be accepted by the Council. <laughs> a Jedi? Mighty blasters! You mean I get to go with you in your starship and everything? 
Anakin. <laughs> Anakin. <laughs> training you, training to be a Jedi, will not be an easy challenge. And if you succeed, it will be a hard, hard life. But it's what I want. What I've always dreamed about. Can I go, Mom? <laughs> this path has been placed for you, Annie. You're up there. <laughs> the choice to take it is yours alone. I want to go. <laughs> ben, pack your things, Annie. We haven't much time. Yippee! Anakin hugs his mom and starts for the other room, then stops. Shmi and Qui-Gon give each other a knowing look. Anakin has realized something. Wait, what about mom? Is, is she free too? Oh, you're coming, aren't you, mom? I tried to free your mother, Annie, but Wada wouldn't have it. But the money from selling! It's just not nearly enough. Son, <laughs> my place is here. My future is here. <laughs> it is time for you to let go, to let go of me. I cannot go with you. I want to stay with you. I don't want things to change. You can't stop change any more than you can stop the suns from setting. Listen to your feelings, Annie. You know what's right. Anakin takes a deep breath, drops his head. Qui-Gon and Shmi exchange a look of concern. When Anakin raises up, there are tears in his eyes. Oh. I'm gonna miss you so much, Mom! I love you, Annie. Now hurry! Anakin and Shmi hug. Anakin runs into the other room. Sorry. <laughs> I will watch after him. You have my word. Will you be all right? Or... Well, he was in my life for such a short time. Wow. <laughs> that also is really in the script. <laughs> Anakin has thrown the last of his things into a small backpack. As he leaves, he stops and pushes the button that wakes his droid up. 3PO stares at him blankly. Well, 3PO, I'm free. And I'm going away. In a starship. <laughs> oh, Master Annie. <laughs> you are my maker. And I wish you well. Is it Miss Doubtfire? <laughs> 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 If you want to get a different voice pack, you'll have to send for it. <laughs> I also have some dip switches you could try manipulating. <laughs> I would like it better, however, if I were a little less naked. Yeah. I'm sorry I wasn't be able to I wasn't able to finish you 3PL. Give you coverings and all. I'm so stupid. <laughs> but I am gonna miss working on you. You've been a great pal. I'll make sure the mom doesn't sell you or anything. Bye. <laughs> sell me. Kitster <laughs> runs it's up my to my voice, it. isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Kitster runs up to Anakin as he and Qui-Gon exit Anakin's hovel. Shmi stands in the doorway. Anakin pulls a handful of coins out of his pocket and gives them to the Kitster. There are so many of us who want you to stay, Annie. <laughs> You're a hero. <laughs> Uh, I have to go. <laughs> well, well, thanks for every moment you've been here. <laughs> You're my best friend. I definitely won't forget. <laughs> Anakin hugs Kitster and runs toward Qui Gon, then stops to look back at his mother. Standing in the doorway, he turns back to Qui Gon, then turns and runs back to his mother. Do it, Mom. I just can't. Annie, remember when you climbed the great dune in order to chase the ba bantha? Yes. Ba yes. Away so they wouldn't be in sh shot? Yeah. Remember how you collapsed several times, exhausted, thinking you couldn't do it? This is one of those times when you have to do something you don't think you can do. I know how strong you are, Annie. Annie, I know you can do this. 
Will I ever see you again? Now, what does your heart tell you? <laughs> uh, I hope so. <laughs> so, yes, I guess. Then we will see each other again. Oh, oh, nice. I will become a Jedi, and I will come back, and then I'll free you, Mom. I promise. <laughs> no matter where you are, my love will be with you. Now be brave. And... Don't look back. Just uh, don't look back. I love you so much. <laughs> Shmi hugs Anakin, then turns him around so he's facing Qui-Gon, and off he marches like the brave little trooper that he is. He marches right past Qui-Gon, st staring right ahead, tears in his eyes, determined not to look back. In the desert, the probe droid beeps and whistles to Darth Maul. The Sith Lord goes on a speeder bike and follows the probe droid into Mos Espa. <laughs> Anakin and Qui-Gon stop before Jira's fruit stand. Anakin hands Jira some coins. I've been freed, and I'm going away. <laughs> Buy yourself a cooling unit with this. Otherwise, I'd worry about you. <laughs> Jira is astonished. She stares, not knowing what to say. Can I give you a hug? <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'll miss you, Annie. There isn't a kind of boy in the galaxy. You, be careful. Anakin runs to join Qui-Gon, who has already started down the street. As they walk along together, Qui-Gon notices something out of the corner of his eye. Suddenly, without breaking his stride, he ignites his laser sword, swings around, and lunges forward and cuts a lurking probe droid in half. Qui-Gon inspects the sparking and fizzing droid. What is that? It's a, it's a probe droid. Very, very <laughs> unusual. Not like anything I've seen before. Come on. Qui-Gon and Anakin start running toward the Naboo spacecraft. Anakin is having a hard time keeping up. <laughs> Master Qui-Gon, please. please. <coughs> Qui-Gon turns to answer and sees a dark cloaked figure bearing down on a speeder bike. <gasps> Anakin, drop! Anakin drops to the ground just as Darth Maul sweeps over him. Maul jumps off his speeder bike, and before he has hit the ground, the Sith Lord has swung a death blow with his laser sword that is barely blocked by Qui-Gon. Anakin picks himself up. The two galactic warriors, Sith and Jedi, are bashing each other with incredible blows. They move in a continual cloud of dust, smashing everything around them. This is a fierce fight. Anakin gets up, bewildered by the confrontation. Anakin, get to the ship! Take off! Go! Go! <laughs> Qui-Gon struggles to fend off the relentless onslaught as Anakin faces, races off to the ship. He runs into the main hallway of the spaceship where Padme and Captain Panaka are working. Qui-Gon's in trouble! He says to take off now! Who the fuck are you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, just, he's a friend, all right? <laughs> Captain Panaka, Anakin, and Padme rush into the cockpit where Obi-Wan and Rick Ollier are checking the hyperdrive. Qui-Gon is in trouble. He said, pull up. <laughs> Take off. <laughs> I don't see anything. He's over there. Fly low. Qui-Gon and Darth Maul continue their sword battle, leaping over one another in an incredible display of acrobatics. The two warriors hear the ship fly over them a few feet off the ground. Qui-Gon almost disappears for a moment before Darth Maul knows what's happening. Your lights are off, bitch. <laughs> Qui-Gon is on the spacecraft's <laughs> ramp. The Sith Lord immediately jumps onto the ramp after Qui-Gon, but barely makes it. His heels hang over the edge of a 40-foot drop. Qui-Gon swings his laser sword with all his might and knocks Darth Maul off the ramp and onto the desert floor. The ramp closes, <laughs> and the Naboo craft rockets away, leaving the Sith Lord standing alone. <laughs> Anakin and Obi-Wan rush into the hallway to find Qui-Gon collapsed on the floor opposite the entry. R2 is looking over him. The Jedi is breathing hard, wet with sweat, and covered in dirt. Are you all right? I think so. That was a surprise I won't soon forget. What was it? I don't know. <laughs> but he was well trained in the Jedi arts. My guess is he was after the Queen. Do you think he'll follow us? Well, we'll be safe enough once we're in hyperspace. 
But I have no doubt he knows our destination. Yeah, but what are we going to do about it? <laughs> Obi-Wan gives Anakin a who-are-you look. Anakin returns an innocent stare. We will... We Hi. will be patient, Anakin Skywalker. Meet Obi-Wan Kenobi. Hi. <laughs> yeah, pleased to meet you. Whoa. Wait, you're a Jedi too? Let's hope... Let's hope this hyperdrive works and what, Watto didn't get the last laugh. The ship shrieks into hyperspace. Back on Naboo. Newt Gunray sits in a strange mechanical walking chair which approaches C.O. Bibble and several other Naboo officials. What are you doing? Uh, try, what are you, wait, when, when are you going to give up this pointless strike? Your queen is lost, your people are starving, and you, governor, are going to die. Much sooner than your people, I'm afraid. Take him away. This invasion will gain you nothing. We're a democracy. The people have decided. They will not live under your... (laughs) (laughs) Tyranny! Uh, My troops are in position to begin searching the swamps for these rumored underwater villages. They'll not stay hidden for long. Back on the Naboo cruiser, the ship is asleep. The lights are dim as Padme walks into the main room. She goes to a monitor and watches the Bibble plea recording. Jar Jar is stretched out on the floor, snoring. R2 is on one side, cooing as he rests. Padme appears tired. She senses something watching her and turns around with a start. She sees Anakin sitting in the corner, shivering and looking very dejected. She goes over to him. He looks up at her with tears in his eyes. He is holding his arms to keep himself warm. So, are you all right? Or <laughs> very cold. Oh, right, right. You're from a warm planet. Yeah. Yeah. Too warm for my taste. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I like space. Space is cold. You seem sad. Oh, oops. Uh, yep. The, the queen is worried. Her people are suffering, dying. She must convince the Senate to intervene or... Well, gosh, I'm, I'm not sure what will happen. I, I'm, I'm not sure what's going to happen to me. I don't even know if I'm going to see you again. <laughs> I made this for you. When? (laughs) When could you have done that? Like like I'm bastard, whatever. I know, there's been a lot happening. Look, I I want you to remember me, so I carved it out of a J4 snippet. It will bring you good fortune. Oh, wow, It's, it's beautiful. But, you know, I don't need this to remember you. (laughs) Many things will change when we reach the capital, Annie. My caring for you will always remain. (laughs) (laughs) I I care for you too, only I miss, I miss. I mean, your mother, you miss your mother. (laughs) Anakin looks at her, unable to speak. She hugs him. (laughs) Come on, come on, okay, all right, we did it, we did it. The space. The spacecraft flies over the endless cityscape of Coruscant, the capital of the galaxy. Anakin looks out the cockpit window in awe. Coruscant. (laughs) The capital of the Republic. The entire planet is one big effing city. (laughs) Wow. It's so huge! (laughs) The sleek Naboo spacecraft lands on the platform high above the street level of the galactic capital. The ramp lowers. Obi-Wan, Qui-Gon, Jar Jar, and Anakin descend the ramp first and bow before Palpatine and Chancellor Valorum. Padme smiles at Anakin. Palpatine bows before the Queen. It is a great gift to see you alive, Your Majesty. May I present Supreme Chancellor Valorum. Welcome, your highness. <laughs> it is an honor to finally meet you in person. 
I must relate to you how distressed everyone is over the current situation. I've called for a special session of the Senate to hear your position. Grateful for your concern, <laughs> Chancellor. There is a question of procedure, but I feel confident we can overcome it. Jar Jar and Anakin start to follow, then stop, noticing that Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon are staying with the Supreme Chancellor. Queen Amidala waves to the duo to follow her. Anakin looks back to Qui-Gon, and he nods to go ahead. You know, the queen's being grossly nice, me for think. Pretty, 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 pretty hot. Right. I must speak with the Jedi Council immediately, Your Honor. The situation has become more complicated. Later, Queen Amidala is sitting listening to Palpatine in his quarters. Eritre and Rabe stand behind the queen. Padme is nowhere to be seen. Anakin and Jar Jar are waiting in an adjoining room. They can see the queen, but cannot hear what is being said. This an old pitte, pitte, pitte on to my eye. Well, don't look at me. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> The Republic is not what it once was. The Senate is full of greedy, scrappy delegates who are only looking out for themselves and their home systems. There is no interest in the common good, no civility, only politics. It's disgusting. I must be frank, Your Majesty. There is little chance the Senate will act on evasion. Chancellor Valorum seems to think there is hope. If I may say so, Your Majesty, the Chancellor has little real power. He is mirrored down by baseless accusations of corruption. A manufactured scandal surrounds him. The bureaucrats are in charge now. What options do we have? Our best choice would be to push for the election of a stronger Supreme Chancellor. <laughs> One who will take control of the bureaucrats enforces the law and give us justice. You could call for a vote of no confidence in Chancellor Valenum. He has been our strongest supporter. Is there any other way? Our only other choice would be to submit a plea to the courts. There's no time for that. <laughs> the courts take even longer to decide things than the Senate. Our people are dying, Senator, more and more each day. We must do something quickly to stop the Federation. Hmm, but to be realistic, Your Highness, I say we're going to have to accept Federation control for the time being. That is something I cannot do. Yeah. In the Jedi Temple, Qui-Gon stands in a tall, stately room. Twelve Jedi sit in a semicircle. <laughs> Obi-Wan stands behind Qui-Gon in the center of the room. <laughs> the senior Jedi is Mace Windu. To his left is an alien Jedi named Kiadi Mundi, and to his right, the Jedi Master Yoda. Yes. My only conclusion can be that it was a Sith Lord. A Sith Lord? Impossible! <laughs> That's impossible! The Sith have been extinct for a millennium! <laughs> the very Republic is threatened. It's involved the Sith are. <laughs> I do not believe they could have returned without us knowing. Hard to see. The dark side is. Discover who this assassin is. We must. Uh, I said he will reveal himself again. This attack was with purpose. That is clear. And I agree that the queen is a target. With this Nebu queen, you must stay. Qui-Gon. <laughs> Protect her. <laughs> we will use all our resources here to unravel this mystery and discover the identity of your attacker. May the force be with you. May the fucking force be with you. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Obi-Wan turns to leave, but Qui-Gon continues to face the council. Master Qui-Gon, yes. more to say, have you? With your permission, my master, I have encountered a virgence in the force. A virgence, you say? Located around a person? A boy. His cells have the highest concentration of midi-chlorians. I have seen in a... midi-chlorians I have yes, seen in it. a life form. Thank you. <laughs> it is possible he was conceived by the midi-chlorians. Nice. You're referring to the prophecy of the one who will bring balance to the force you believe is this boy. <laughs> I don't presume. But you do. Revealed your opinion is. Ha ha. <laughs> I request the boy be tested. <laughs> Trained as a Jedi, you request for him? Finding him was the will of the Force. I have no doubt of that. There is too much happening here. <laughs> <laughs> well, bring him before us then. Tested he will be. Thank you. <laughs> Anakin. Anakin, tentative, walks down one of the long hallways in Senator Palpatine's quarters. He stops before a door that is flanked by two guards. Uh, may I help you, son? <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm looking for the handmaiden, Padme. Boys here to see Padme? <laughs> Send him in. Hey. The, do the door's open, and Anakin enters the Queen's quarters. Rabbe greets Anakin as two other handmaidens come and go into the next room. Uh, I'd like to speak with Padme if I could. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, Annie. Padme's not here right now. <sighs> Who is it? Anakin Skywalker, just see Padme, your highness. The queen moves into the doorway and studies Anakin. Anakin bows and looks down, then takes a peek at her. <laughs> I've sent Padme on an errand. Oh, I'm going to the Jedi Temple to start my training. I hope. <laughs> cool. Well, I may not see her again, uh, and I just wanted to say goodbye. We will tell her for you. We're sure. We're sure her heart goes with you. <laughs> Thank you, Your Highness. Sorry to have disturbed you. The queen disappears behind the doorway and Anakin exits. Senate chambers are huge. Thousands of senators and their aides sit in the circular assembly area. Chancellor Valorum sits in an elevated area in the center. Hundreds of aides and droids hurry about. Senator Palpatine and Queen Amidala sit in the Naboo congressional box, which is actually a floating platform. Palpatine leans over to the queen. If the Federation moves to, blah, blah, blah. If the Federation moves to defer <laughs> the motion, your majesty, I beg of you to ask for a resolution and... This congressional session. I, uh, um, yep. Yep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wish I had your confidence in this, Senator. You must force a new election for Supreme Chancellor. I promise you there are many who will support us. It is our best chance, Your Majesty, our only chance. You truly believe Chancellor Valorum will not bring our motion to a vote? He is distracted. He is afraid. He will be of no help. The chair recognizes the senator from the sovereign system of Naboo. <laughs> the Naboo congressional box floats into the center. Supreme Chancellor, delegates to the Senate, a tragedy has occurred on our peaceful system of Naboo. We have become caught in a dispute you're all well aware of, which began right here with the taxation of trade routes and has now engulfed our entire planet in the oppression of the Trade Federation. A second box rushes to the center of the Senate. It's filled with Federation trade barons led by Lot Dodd, the senator for the Federation. Now, now this is outrageous. <laughs> I object to the senator's statements. The chair does not recognize the senator from the Trade Federation at this time. Please return to your station. Lot Dodd reluctantly moves back to his place. <laughs> to state our allegations, I present Queen Amidala, the recently elected ruler of Naboo, to speak on our behalf. Queen Amidala stands and addresses the assembly. There is some applause. <laughs> 
honorable representatives of the Republic, distinguished delegates, and your honor, Supreme Chancellor Valorum, I come to you under the gravest of circumstances. The Naboo system has been invaded by force. Invaded? Yes, it's true. Invaded against all the laws of the Republic by the drawed, drawed, by the droid armies of Okay, the now droid. object, object, I'm okay. sorry to cut you off, no, but it's there fine. is no proof. <laughs> All right, all right. Now this is <laughs> this is incredible. Okay, we, we recommend a commission now to be sent to Naboo to ascertain the truth. Overruled. Well, Your Honor, you cannot allow us to be condemned without reasonable observation. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's against all the rules of procedure. A third box representing Malastare moves into the center of the room. Axe Mo, the ambassador, addresses the convention. Oh God, the Congress of Malastare concurs with the honorable delegate from the Trade Federation. <laughs> A commission must be appointed. That's the law. <laughs> the point! Valorum confers with several Come of his on. aides and Vice Chairman Masameda. <laughs> Into the bureaucrats, the true rulers of the Republic, and all the payroll of trade revelation, I might add. This is what Chancellor Varel's strength will disappear. The, the point is conceded. Uh, Section 523A <laughs> takes precedence here, yeah, Queen Amadalo of the Naboo. <laughs> will you defer to the motion to allow a commission to how much the to explore the validity <laughs> of your accusations? I will not defer. Oh, I have God. come before you to resolve this attack on our sovereignty now. I was not elected to watch my people suffer and die while you discuss this invasion in a committee. Yes. Yes, queen. <laughs> if, this, <laughs> if this body is not capable of action, I suggest new leadership is needed. I move for a vote of no confidence in Chancellor Valorum's leadership. What? Come, come on. <laughs> yes. This causes a great stir in the assembly. A loud murmur crescendos into a roar of approval and jeers. Yes. Chancellor Valorum is stunned and stands speechless. His vice chair, Massa Meda, takes over. Honor! We shall have honor! <laughs> Things settle down a little. The Federation box settles next to Amidala. Prince Bail Organa moves into his box in the arena. Alderaan seconds the motion for a vote of no confidence in Chancellor Valora. The motion has been seconded by Bail Organa of Alderaan. Come on, we barely heard that. <laughs> there must be no delays. The motion is on the floor, and it's got to be voted on this session. Well, right? now, well, now, the Trade Federation, <laughs> for all right, fuck's sake. we moved <laughs> that the motion be sent to the Procedures Committee for study. You see, Your Majesty, the tide is with you. Oh. Valerum will be voted out, I assure you, and they will elect in a new chancellor, a strong chancellor, one who will not let our tragedy continue. The Supreme Chancellor requests a recess tomorrow. We'll begin the vote. Okay, bye! <laughs> <laughs> Palpatine. I thought you were my ally, my friend. You have betrayed me. How could you do this? <laughs> Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan stand outside the palace on a balcony. The boy will not pass the council's test, Master, and you know it, he's far too old. <laughs> <laughs> Anakin will become a Jedi, I promise you. Well, don't defy the council, Master, not again. I will do what I must. Well, Master, you could be sitting on the council by now if you would just follow the code. They will not go along with you this time. You still have much to learn, my young apprentice. <laughs> Anakin, st Anakin stands before the twelve Jedi. Mace Windu holds a small handheld viewing screen. In rapid succession, images flash across the screen. A ship! <laughs> a cop! <laughs> Speeder! Good, good young one. How feel you? <laughs> Cold, sir. Afraid, are you? No, sir. Afraid to give up your life? I don't think so. <laughs> See through your weekend. <laughs> Better be mindful of your feelings. 
Your thoughts dwell on your mother. Why miss her? Boo, afraid to lose her, I think. What's got that got to do with anything? Everything. <laughs> Fear is the path to the dark side. Fear leads to anger. Anger leads to hate. Hate leads to debris. I am not afraid. Uh, yet I must have the deepest commitment and the serious mind. I sense much fear in you. I'm not afraid. Yeah, continue, we will. <laughs> Queen Amidala is standing in Palpatine's quarters, staring out the window with Jar Jar. The lights of the city shimmer before them. Um, so, uh, <laughs> let me so wonder why the gods invent pain. <laughs> <laughs> to motivate us, I imagine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, uh, you for thinking, uh, you for people gonna <laughs> die? I don't know. Mm. Well, that's too bad. Gungan's gonna get pasted too, eh? I hope not, Jar Jar. I hope not. <sighs> Gungan's not a gonna die without a fight. We the warriors. Woo -hoo, woo -hoo. We the gonna grand army. Is that why you uh no like enough, me thinks? Palpatine and Captain Panaka rush into the room and bow before the queen. Your Highness, right? See, check it. Senator Palpatine has been nominated to, see, uh, to succeed Valorinum as Supreme Ch Counselor, <laughs> Chancellor. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. A surprise to be shown, but a welcome one, I promise your majesty. If I am elected, I will bring democracy back to our republic. I will put an end to corruption. The Trade Federation will lose its influence over the bureaucrats, and our people will be freed. Well, who else has been nominated? Bail Antilles of Alderaan, an Ainley team of Malastare. Love them. <laughs> Love them. Love them. I feel confident our situation will create a strong sympathy vote for us. I will be chancellor, I promise you. Well, I fear by the time you have control of the bureaucrats, Senator, there will be nothing left of our cities, our people, our way of life. I understand your concern, Your Majesty. Unfortunately, the Federation, the possession of our planet, the laws in their favor. With the Senate in transition, there is nothing more I can do here. Senator, this is your arena. I feel I must return to mine. I have decided to go back to Naboo. My place is with my people. W w go, go back? Yes. But your majesty, be realistic. You would be in danger. They will force you to sign the treaty. I will sign no treaty, Senator. My fate will be no different from that of our people. Captain? Yes, your highness. Oh, you. That was you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, yes, uh, ready my ship. No, please, your majesty, girl, stay here. No. Where it's safe. No place is safe. If the Senate doesn't condemn this invasion, it is clear to me now that the Republic no longer functions as a democracy. If you win the election, Senator, I know you will do everything possible to stop the Federation. I pray you will bring sanity and compassion... Back to the Senate. Amidala and Naretnu exit the room. Palpatine has a self-satisfied smile on his face. Meanwhile, back in the Jedi Temple, Anakin, Obi-Wan, and Qui-Gon stand before the 12 members of the Jedi Council. <laughs> Correct, you were Qui-Gon. His cells contain a high concentration of midichlorians. Yeah, the force is strong with him. <laughs> well, he's to be trained then. No. No, he will not be trained. No. He's too old. What? <laughs> There's already too much anger in him? He is the chosen one. You must see it. Clouded, the boy's future is. Masked by his youth. I will train him then. I take Anakin as my Padawan learner. Anakin? An, an, an apprentice? You have quite con impossible to take out a second. We forbid it. Obi-Wan is ready. Yeah, 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 I'm ready. 
I am ready to face the trials. <laughs> <laughs> Ready so early, are you? What know you of ready? Ooh. <laughs> Impressive. <laughs> Headstrong, and he has much to learn about the living force, but he is capable. There is little more he will learn from me. Our own council will keep on who is ready. Fucking Yoda. More to learn he has. <laughs> now is not the time for this. The Senate is voting for a new Supreme Chancellor. Queen Amidala is returning home, which will put pressure on the Federation and could widen the confrontation. And draw out the Queen's attacker? Events are moving fast. Ooh, too fast. <laughs> Go with the Queen to Naboo and discover the identity of the Dark Warrior. That is the clue we need to unravel this mystery of the Sith. Young Skywalker's fate will be decided later. I brought Anakin here. He must stay in my charge. He has nowhere else to go. I mean, he's your ward, Qui-Gon. We're not going to dispute that. Train him not. <laughs> Take him with you, but train him not. Protect the queen, but do not intercede if it comes to war until we have the Senate's approval. May the force be with you. Qui-Gon, Obi-Wan, and Anakin stand on the landing platform outside the ship. Our two whistles a happy tune as he leans over the edge of the platform watching the traffic. Suddenly, he leans over too far and falls overboard. Oh! After a moment, he reappears using his onboard jets <laughs> to propel himself back to the landing platform. The, the, the wind whips at Anakin as he listens to the Jedi. It's not disrespect, Master. It's the truth. <laughs> From your point of view. The boy is dangerous. They God. all sense it. Why can't you? His fate is uncertain, not dangerous. The council will decide Arnakin's future. That should be enough for you. Now get on board. Uh, uh, Master Qui-Gon, sir, I do not wish to be a problem. Good Annie, day. you won't be, Annie. <laughs> I'm not allowed to train you, so I want you, I want you to watch me and be mindful. Always remember, your focus determines your reality. Stay close to me, and you will be safe. M Mr... Master. Ma masters? Yes. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Master, Mr. Gone? Mr. Sir. Master. Master, sir. I've been wondering. Yes. What are me chlorines? Yes. Midi chlorians are a microscopic life form that resides within all living cells and communicates with the force. Oh. <laughs> Wait. They live inside me? In your cells. Ugh. We are symbionts with the midi-chlorians. Symbionts? Yes. Life forms living together <laughs> for mutual advantage. Without the midi-chlorians, life could not exist. And we would have no knowledge of the force within us. They can gently speak to you, telling you the will of the force. They do? <laughs> When you learn to quiet your mind, you will hear them speaking to you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Get I, ready. I, I do not understand. Oh, I know. With time and training, Annie, you will. Jesus. Two taxis pull up, and Captain Panaka, Senator Palpatine, 20 or so troops, guards, and officers walk briefly towards the ship, followed by Queen Amidala, Padme, Irte, and finally Jar Jar. Amidala and her handmaidens stop before the Jedi. Your Highness, it is our pleasure to continue to serve and protect you. I welcome your help. Senator Palpatine fears the Federation means to destroy me. I promise you, I will not let that happen. Only 25 more pages! <laughs> We've been going home! 
in the Naboo throne room, new in rune stand before a hologram of Darth Sidious. <laughs> the queen is on her way to you. I regret she is of no further use to us. When she gets there, destroy her. Yes, my lord. Viceroy, is the planet secure? Oh, yes, my lord. We have taken over the last pockets of primitive life forms. We are in complete control of the planet now. Good. I will see to it that it is the Senate. Things stay as they are. I am sending Darth Ma to join you. Oh. He will deal with the Jedi. <laughs> yes, my lord. <laughs> Sidious fades out. I'm a Sion. A Sith Lord here with us. <laughs> In the Naboo spacecraft, Anakin stands next to the pilot, Rick Ollier, pointing to various buttons and gauges. And that one? <laughs> Ah, uh, it's the forward stabilizer, I think. <laughs> and that controls the pitch? You catch on really quick for a kid. Yo, the moment we land, the Federation pigs gonna arrest you. <laughs> and force you to sign a treaty. Mm. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> But on. <laughs> I'm not sure what you hope to accomplish by this. I'm going to take back what's ours. Man, there's only 12 of us, your highness. We ain't got no army. I cannot fight a war for you, your highness. Only protect you. Hmm. You know who we need? Jaja Binks! <laughs> <laughs> Mifa, your highness? Yes, I need your help. Okay. The Nabooru cruiser heads toward the lush green planet. There's only one Federation battle cruiser orbiting. Obi-Wan and Captain Panaka spot it on the view screen. The blockade is gone. The war is over. There's no need for it now. I have one battleship on my scope. A droid control ship. They probably spotted us. The block is hot. We haven't much time. The Queen, Captain Panaka, troops and handmaidens get ready to disembark as the ship lands. The elevator door slides open and Anakin emerges into the hold area. He sees Padme and runs up to her. Hey, where you been? Manny, uh, what, are you, what are you doing here? Oh, I'm with Qui-Gon, but they're not going to let me be a Jedi. I'm too old. <laughs> it's like, like gymnast rules or something? Um, <laughs> uh, all right, this is, this is going to be dangerous, Annie. Is it? <laughs> uh, I can help. <laughs> Where are we going? To war, I'm afraid. Shit. Yeah, I said dangerous. <laughs> like, number one danger. Um, the queen has had to make the most difficult decision of her life. She doesn't believe in fighting, Annie. We are a peaceful people. Well, I want to help. I'm really glad you're back. <laughs> Anakin smiles. And Padme smiles back. Okay, yeah. All right. That's cute, yeah. <laughs> the Naboo spacecraft lands in the Gungan swamp. Troops unload the ships in the background as Obi-Wan approaches Qui-Gon. Jar Jar's on his way to Gungan City, Master. Uh, good. Good. Do, mm. do you think the Queen... <laughs> Sorry, excuse me. Uh, do you think the Queen's idea will work? The Gungans will not easily be swayed, and we cannot use our power to help her. I, uh, mm. I am sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry for my behavior, yes, Master. Yes. It's not my place to disagree with you about the boy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I am grateful you think I'm ready for the trials. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You have been a good apprentice. Thank you. You are much wiser than I am, Obi-Wan. Okay. I foresee you will become a great Jedi Knight. <laughs> Jar Jar swims down into the bubble city of Otagunga, and he enters the, as he enters the main square, he is stunned in amazement and fear. He is nervous and shaking. Hello? Where Gotha 
everybody. The plaza is empty. He notices that many of the buildings are shot up as if there had been a battle of some kind. Jar Jar swims back to the surface and exits the swamp lake. Uh, I uh, uh, dare say nobody dare. All gone. Some kind of fight, I think. Sorry. No Gungans. No Gungans. <laughs> you think they've been taken to the camps? Well, more likely they were wiped out. Oh. <laughs> I'm... If you're, if you're going to be... A, there's better ways to I'm, say that. Though. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, like, literally standing right here. You know? <laughs> That's okay. No, no, no. Misa not think so, okay? Gungan hidden. That's what we're so good at. When in trouble, go to sacred place. Mm. Misa thinking no finding them there. Well, do you know where they are? The group follows Jar Jar as he moves through the swamp. Jar Jar stops and sniffs at the air. The group stops behind him. Yep, dissing it. <laughs> Jar Jar makes a strange chattering noise. Suddenly, out of nowhere, Captain Tarples and six other Gungan troops riding on Cadus emerge from the brush. <laughs> Hello, Dolly, Captain Tarples. Uh, Binks. <laughs> no again. Oh, come on! We coming to see the boss. Ouch time, Binks. Ouch time for all in you. <laughs> Jar Jar, Queen Amidala, Anakin, R2, Qui-Gon, Obi-Wan, Padme, Rabe, Arate, and the rest of the group are led through a clearing full of Gungan refugees at the far end of the ruins of a grand temple with massive carved heads. Boss Nass and several other council members walk out uh, on the top of a three-quartered submerged head. Jar Jar, you shall pay in this time. Who's the Usin other? I am Queen Amidala of the Nabu. I come before you in peace. Oh, Nabu begin. You so bring in the mechanics. They bust an usin home. You so all the bomb band. You so all die meeting. We wish to form an alliance. Your Honor, Your Honor. Who so this? Hi, uh, so I am Queen Amidala. Um, this is my decoy, my protection, my loyal bodyguard. Anakin is stunned. <laughs> Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon give each other a knowing look. Yeah, so I'm... <laughs> look, I'm really... I'm sorry for my deception. I'm sorry. But under the circumstances, it has become necessary to protect myself. Although we do not always agree, your honor, our two great so societies, who am I talking to? Is it you? Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right, look. I, look, I, uh, although we do not always agree, thank you, violin. Your honor, our two great societies have always lived in peace until now. The Trade Federation has destroyed all that we've worked so hard to build. You're in hiding, my people are in camps. If we do not act quickly, all will be lost forever. I ask you to help, but no, no, you know what I do? I beg you to help us. Padme drops to her knees and prostrates herself before Boss Nass. <laughs> you, want, you want me to do it? Please, sir. Okay. Please, sir. <laughs> Let me just, thank you. Okay, here we go. Uh, we are your humble servants. Our fate is in your hands. Slowly, Captain Panaka and his troops bow down before the Gungan Council, Everybody. then the handmaidens, Anakin, and finally the Everybody. Jedi. <laughs> the Gungans are puzzled by this. Boss if, Nass if begins I gotta do it, you to gotta laugh. Do it. <laughs> Just to get a little high. Okay. Ha ha ha! You so think and you so no greater than the Gungans. Me so like this. Me so maybe we so been friends. <laughs> So there's two queens? <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, in the throne room, Newt, Rune, and Darth Maul walk with a hologram of Darth Sidious. Oh, so, okay, we sent our patrols. We already located their starship in the swamp. Uh, it won't be long, <laughs> my lord. This is an unexpected move for her. 
It's too aggressive. Lord Murr, be mindful. Yes, my master. <laughs> be patient. Let them make the first move. Okay. <laughs> At the edge of the swamp, a Gungan sentry sits on top of the ancient temple head. And can we get lights up? Uh, searching the landscape with a pair of electro binoculars, he sees something and yells down at Anakin at the foot of the statue. Guys are coming. <laughs> All right, they're here. Anakin yells and runs over to Padme and the Jedi, who are discussing a battle plan with five Gungan generals. Boss Nass puts his arm around Jar Jar. You so doing grand. Jar Jar bringing the Naboo together. Oh, no, 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 no. So we <laughs> so making you a bomba general. General? Hey, why not? Mother. <laughs> oh, no. Jar Jar's eyes roll back, his tongue flops out, and he faints. <laughs> Four speeders pull up to the group, Captain Panaka, and a dozen or so guards and pilots pile out and join the group. Uh, what's the situation? Almost everyone's in camp. A few hundred popo and guards have formed an <laughs> underground movement. I brought as many of the leaders as I could. The Federation Army's also much larger than we thought. That's not good. And much stronger. <laughs> yeah. Your Highness, this is a battle I do not think we can win. <laughs> this battle's a diversion. The Gungans must draw the droid army away from the cities. We can enter the city using the secret passages on the, the waterfall side. We all know about that. Once we get to the main entrance, uh, Captain Panaka will create a diversion, right? And so that we can enter the palace and capture the Viceroy. Uh, without the Viceroy, they'll be lost and confused. Uh, what do you think, Master Jedi? Is it good? Or... Wow. Uh, <laughs> the Viceroy will be well guarded. The difficulty is getting into the throne room. Once we're inside, we shouldn't have a problem. There is a possibility. With this, di with this diversion, many Gungans will be killed. We are ready to do us a part. We have a plan which should immobilize the droid army. Droid ar Why can't I say droid? The droid <laughs> army. We will send what pilots we have to knock out the droid control ship, which is orbiting the planet. If we can get past their ray shields, we can sever communication, and their droids will be helpless, all right? Oh, wow, a well-conceived plan. <laughs> <laughs> However, there's great risk. The weapons on your fighters may not penetrate the shields on the control ship. And there's an even bigger danger. If the Viceroy escapes, Your Highness, he will return with another droid army. Ah, oh, bummer. Okay. <laughs> but see... That is why we must not fail to get to the Viceroy. Just everything depends on it. Yes. So it should be easy, right? Newt, Rune, Darth Maul, OOM9, and a hologram of Darth Sidious walk through the Naboo the throne room. She is more foolish than I thought. Oh, we are sending all available troops to meet this army of hers assembling near the swamp. It appears to be... <laughs> Made up of primitives, and we do not expect much resistance. I am ex increasing security at all Nabu detention camps. <laughs> I feel there's more to this, my master. The two Jedi may be using the queen for their own purposes. I'm melting. <laughs> <laughs> Jedi cannot, damn it, this thing. The Jedi cannot become involved. They can only protect the Queen. Even Qui John Jen will not break. <laughs> Did I say that wrong? It was close. <laughs> yeah, it was good. That's that's right. Right. Got it. Qui okay. Jonathan Jen, that's correct. <laughs> Qui Jonathan. Yeah. Right. Yeah. What they said. Uh -huh. We'll break the covenant. This will work to our advantage. Okay, so I have your approval to proceed there, my lord. <laughs> proceed. Wipe them out. All of them. Okay. Come. Padme. Padme, followed by Obi-Wan, Qui-Gon, Anakin, and R2, stealthily makes her way towards the entrance to the main hangar. They are followed by about 20 Naboo guards, pilots, and troops. They stop, and Padme uses a small red laser light to signal across the plaza to Captain Panaka. 
Rabe, and 20 other assorted Naboo troops. They signal back. Now, once we get inside, Annie, <laughs> you find a safe place to hide and stay there because the sun will come up tomorrow. That's what it's going Sure. Okay. And stay there. Droid troops oh, yeah. mill about the tank-filled plaza at the far end of the plaza. Several droids begin to run and fire. Naboo soldiers begin to fire back at the battle droids. As the ruckus erupts at one end of the plaza, Padme and her troops rush into the main hangar. Captain Panaka and his soldiers continue to engage the droids outside. Alarms are sounding as Padme, the Jedi, Anakin, Erte, Padme's troops all rush into the hangar. Battle droids begin firing at them as they run for cover. Anakin runs under a Naboo fighter. The Jedi deflect bolts aimed at Padme back onto the battle droids, causing them to explode. Newt, Rune, and four council members watch the plaza battle on a large view screen. I thought the battle was going to take place far from here. This is too close. What is going on? <laughs> I wish I knew. I told you I would, there was more of this. The Jedi are fucking evolved. Come on. <laughs> Anakin hides behind one of the Naboo fighters, ducking, the large bo- ducking as large bolts whiz past and explode near him. Padme and the two Jedi destroy battle droids right and left. The Queen's troops and Erite also blast away at the droids. Padme signals to her pilots. I don't know. Get to your ships! <laughs> the pilots and our two units run for the Naboo fighter craft stacked high in the hangar bay. One of the pilots jumps into the fighter right above where Anakin is hiding. Whoa! <laughs> Better find a new hiding place, kid. I'm taking his ship. <laughs> hmm. The ship begins to levitate out of the hangar. Battle droids fire at it as it falls in behind five other fighters. Our two whistles to Anakin from a second fighter not far away. Anakin runs and jumps into the second fighter to hide. Captain Panaka and Sabe and the Naboo troops rush into the hangar and overwhelm the few remaining battle droids. Padme, Obi-Wan, and Qui-Gon join forces with Captain Panaka. So my guess is the Viceroy is in the throne room? I agree. Yeah, okay. They start to head for the exit. On the way passing a fighter where Anakin is hiding are two whistles, a greeting as Anakin... Poops out of the cockpit. Hey, wait for me! No, Annie. You stay there. Stay right where you are. But I... Stay in that cockpit! (laughs) They head for the exit. As they are about to go through the door, suddenly everyone scatters, revealing Darth Maul standing in the doorway. Ooh, girl. Captain Panaka, Padme, and her troops back away. Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan step forward. We will handle this. The two Jedi take off their capes and ignite their laser swords. Darth Maul takes off his cape and ignites his laser sword. Both ends of the sword light up. At the far end of the hangar, six wheel droids roll in to transform into their battle positions. R2 calls Anakin's attention to the droids. Oh, no! The Jedi begin to fight the Sith Lord. The droids begin to advance and start firing on Padme and her troops. (laughs) Save the energy. This is a long fight, guys. This is a very long fight. Keep going. Keep going. R2 R2 whistles a reply. Suddenly the ship's systems go on and the ship begins to levitate. Anakin. All right! (laughs) Sorry, R2, I was watching the fight. (laughs) Oh, great idea! I'll take over. Let's see. Anakin steers the ship towards the droids. He pushes a button and the ship begins to shake. Oh, where's the trigger? Oops, wrong one. Maybe this one. Anakin pushes a second button, and the lasers begin to fire, wiping out several destroyer droids. R2 whistles a cheer. (laughs) Yeah, all right! (laughs) Droid blaster, yeah! (laughs) The Jedi are engaged in a fierce sword fight with Darth Maul. They have moved into the center of the hangar. (laughs) 
While the wheel droids are momentarily distracted by Anakin, Captain Panaka, Padme, and her crew... Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> exit oh, no. into the palace hallway. <laughs> The wheel droids start firing at Anakin. There are explosions all around him. Oops, shield up! <laughs> always on the right. Shields, always on the right. Anakin flips several switches and the afterburner ignites. Mm, I know we're moving. I'll shut the energy drive down. The fighter rockets out of the hangar. R2 and Anakin hold on for dear life. <laughs> Whoops! Wrong one. I'm not doing anything! R2. I know! <laughs> I didn't push anything! <laughs> but Naboo le leaves the planet and heads towards the space station. <laughs> we're, we're in another scene if you guys want to take a breath. It's up to you. It's totally up to you. Okay, switching off. <laughs> Go ahead, Rick. <laughs> Rick. Rick. Go ahead, Rick. <laughs> Rick, just read it, Rick. <laughs> Sorry, I was watching this kick-ass fight on YouTube. <laughs> or TikTok, or I don't know, whatever. <laughs> hey, Bravo Flight A. I mean, Bravo Flight A. Uh, take, take on the fighters. Flight B, make the run on the transmitter. Roger that, Bravo Leader. <laughs> The fleet approaches the space station. Many Federation fighters exit the hangars and attack. Enemy fighters straight ahead! Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> On the grassy plains of Naboo, OOM-9 decides to send the wheel droids in. They slowly roll through the deflector shields. They transform themselves. Once they get onto the other side, the Gungans blast the wheel droids with energy balls. The destroyer droids blast many Gungans. Meanwhile, in space... The autopilot's searching for what other ships? <laughs> there is no manual override R2. You have to rewire it or something. <laughs> look! Look, there they are! That's where the autopilot's taking us! Anakin's fighter flies towards the Federation battleship. Back in Theed, the Sith Lord drives the Jedi out of the hangar and into the power generator area door. <laughs> the, uh, three swords are crossed in an intense display of swordsmanship. The Jedi and the Sith Lord fight their way across the narrow bridge of the Theed power generator. Darth Maul jumps onto the bridge above them. The Jedi follow one in front of the Sith Lord and... Hey, I love this, but we don't have time for this. <laughs> It says we don't have time for it. So I oh. love it. I love it. But we we have to go. It's like 11 p.m. on a Sunday. So we gotta go. We okay. Okay. Uh, okay. We'll do it later. I loved it, though. For the Let's try the outside stairway. Captain okay. Panaka blasts a hole in the window, and they make their way outside the building onto the ledge about six stories above the raging waterfall. They pull small attachments out of their pistols and fire the ledge about four stories above them. Thin cables shoot out of the pistols and are embedded into the yep. ledge pad. May Captain Panaka and others begin to climb We're up the wall. There. <laughs> Uh, the grassy plains of Naboo, Jar Jar's bumbling, destroys several more battle droids, or destroyer droids. Or Anakin finds himself in the middle of a space Everyone's battle. Everyone's given up, okay. <laughs> we're trying, we're pushing through, we're pushing yeah. through. The ship explodes behind him over his left shoulder. Oh boy, this is dense! He looks forward to see enemy ships approaching head on. Oops, R2, get us off autopilot! <laughs> I've got control. Okay, let's go left. <laughs> yeah, I got control. <laughs> you did it, R2! <laughs> go back! Like I told me to stay in this cockpit, and that's what I'm gonna do. Now come on. An enemy fighter comes into his sights. Anakin pushes the controls, and instead of firing, his fighter accelerates past the uh, enemy ship. Oops! Whoa! Huh. Now the enemy ship is on his tail. He tries evasive maneuvers. I'll try spinning. That's a good trick. Anakin, <laughs> Anakin rolls the ship as R2 screams. Oh no! We're in trouble. Hang on. The way out of this mess is the way we got into it. Which one? <laughs> this, this one? Anakin, Anakin yanks on the reverse thrusters and the ship slows instantly. The enemy fighter shoots past and explodes against the space station. But before long, Anakin is being chased by another fighter. R2 shrieks. I know, R2. This isn't pod racing. The enemy ship fires and hits Anakin's fighter, sending it into a spin. R We're hit! Anakin regains control as the ship enters the space station hangar. Great gobs of bam! <laughs> Anakin's ship dodges part transport ships and on other obstacles, a huge bulkhead blocks his way. R2 beeps. I'm trying to stop. I am trying to stop, okay? Whoa. 
Anakin hits the reverse thrusters and the ship skids to a stop in the hangar deck. R2 gives out a worried whistle. <laughs> all right, all right. Let's get this system started. Oh, everything's overheated. Everything, all the lights are red. R2 sees droids approaching and Ooh. beeps frantically. <laughs> Okay, you ready? It's the long one. On feed, the laser sword battle continues on a small catwalk outside the vast power pit. Darth Maul backs away from the catwalk into a small door. Qui-Gon follows as Obi-Wan runs to catch up. The Sith Lord, followed by Qui-Gon, enters a long hallway filled with a series of deadly rays that go on and off, pulsating pattern that shoots down the corridor every minute or so. Darth Maul makes it down several walls of deadly rays before they close. Qui-Gon is on one wall away from the Dark Lord. Obi-Wan is just standing next to it and it's five walls away from Darth Maul. The Jedi must wait until the next pulse to advance down the corridor. Obi-Wan is impatient and paces, waiting for all the walls of the rays to open. Qui-Gon sits and meditates. The Sith Lord tries to pass up his wounds in the palace. A window uh, in the hallway blasts apart. Padme, Captain Panaka, and her soldiers climb into the hallway. They head for the door to, to the throne room. Suddenly, two destroyer droids skitter in front of the door. Padme turns around and sees two more appear at the far end of the hallway, <laughs> trapping them in the middle. Ba- Padme throws them down her pistol and turns to Captain Panaka. Throw down your weapons. They win this round. <laughs> but we can't. Captain, I said throw down your weapons. <laughs> she... <laughs> Uh, the grassy plains of Naboo, the Gungans, chaos. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you got it. You know. Back in the power generator room, the electric ray cyclist Qui-Gon sits meditating. The walls of the deadly rays turn away, and Obi-Wan starts running towards Qui-Gon and the Dark Lord. When the wall between o- Qui-Gon and Darth Maul opens, Qui-Gon is in a split second fighting with the Dark Lord in a ferocity not seen before. <laughs> they move into the area at the end of the corridor, calling the melting pit. We are on page 107, a small area that is mostly made up in a deep hole. The electron ray gates begin to close. Obi-Wan tries to make it to the melting pit, but is caught one gate short. He slides to a stop just before uh, he hits the deadly electron field. Qui-Gon and Darth Maul battle around the melting pit as frustrated Obi-Wan watches. Darth Maul catches Qui-Gon off guard. The Sith makes a quick move, bashes his lightsaber handle into Qui-Gon's chin, and runs him through. (laughs) Qui-Gon slumps to the floor in a heap. Don't you fret, Monsieur <laughs> Qui Gon. Meanwhile, you won't feel any pain. <laughs> the Gungans have been overrun. Some flee into the hills, chased by battle droids. Many others are herded into groups by battle droids and destroyer droids. Jar Jar and General Seal uh, are held in a small group with other officers. Ooh, diff a bad. Yeah, be a, this a, be a, be a berry bomb bad. Get out of here, Porky. <laughs> No, Misa hoping this is working for the queen. In the throne room, Padme, Captain Panaka, and six other officers are brought in by ten battle droids before Newt and Rune and four Nemoidian co- uh, council members. Oh, okay, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, your little insurrection is at an end, your highness. Time for you to sign a treaty and this pointless debate and end it in the Senate. Sabe, dressed like the queen, appears in the doorway with several troops. Several destroyed battle droids can be seen in the distance. I will not be signing any treaty, Viceroy. Because you lost! Newt and the others are stunned to see a second queen? Newt yells at the ten guards in the room. (laughs) After her, this one is a decoy! Six of the droids rush out of the throne room after Sabe. Newt turns to Padme. Oh, your queen will not get away with this. Padme slumps down on her throne and immediately hits a security button that opens a panel in the desk opposite Captain Panaka. Padme grabs two pistols, tossing one of them to Captain Panaka and one to an officer. She takes a third pistol and blasts the last of the battle droids. The officers rush to the door control panel as Padme hits the switch to close the doors. The officers at the door jams the controls. Captain Panaka throws more pistols at the other guards. The Nemoidians are confused and afraid. (laughs) Now, Viceroy, (laughs) this is the end of your occupation here. Don't be absurd. There are too few of you. It won't be long before hundreds of destroyer droids break in to rescue us. In the power generator melting pit, Obi-Wan screams as the pulsating electron uh, gate opens. Then the Sith Lord attacks him. The Dark Lord is relentless in his assault on the young Jedi. Obi-Wan and Darth Maul use the Force to fling objects at each other as they fight. Darth Maul seems to have the upper hand. As Obi-Wan grows weary, Darth Maul catches Obi-Wan off guard and the Jedi slips into the melting pit. He is barely able to hold on to the nozzle of the side of the pit. Darth Maul grins evilly at Obi-Wan, and he kicks Obi-Wan's lightsaber down into the endless shaft. 
The Sith Lord smiles as he goes in for the kill at the last moment. Obi-Wan jumps out of the pit, calls Qui-Gon's lightsaber to him, throwing Darth Maul off. The young Jedi swings it with a vengeance, cutting the Sith down. Darth Maul falls into the melting pit to his death? Question mark? Obi-Wan rushes over to Qui-Gon, who is dying. Is this me? Great. <laughs> <Right. laughs> no, you're dying. Master! Right. Master! Yes, yes I, thought was... I thought he was dying. <laughs> oh, oh, God. Oh, Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. yep. Yeah. It is too late. Uh, oh. It is too late. It is. <laughs> no. <laughs> Obi Wan, promise. <laughs> Promise me you'll train the boy. And no, okay. Yes, yes, master. He is the chosen one. He will bring balance. Train him. Fine. Qui-Gon dies. Qui-Gon dies. Uh, Obi-Wan cradles his master quietly weeping. Oh. <laughs> In the Trade Federation hangar, okay. thank you. <laughs> Anakin peeks over the edge of the cockpit to see battle droids surrounding the ship. He ducks back down. Uh-oh, this is not good. Systems are still overheated, R2. Uh-oh. The battle droid captain walks up to the ship and sees R2. Where is your pilot? <laughs> You're the pilot? <laughs> Let me see your identification. <laughs> yes! We have ignition! Woo-hoo! You, hey, come Woo-hoo! out of there or uh, I'll blast you. Not if I can help it, <laughs> shields up! And it can flip the switch and the ship levitates, knocking over the battle droid captain. The other droids shoot, but the lasers are deflected by Anakin's shields, R2 beeps. Woo! This should stop him. Anakin fires lasers as the ship begins to rotate. And take this! He presses a button and launches two torpedoes, which miss the droids. Darn, I missed! The two torpedoes fly down a hallway and explode into a, inside a reactor room. Let's, let's get out of here. Or Anakin's ship <laughs> roars through the hangar deck, bouncing over droids. Now this is pod racing! Woo! 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 The bridge explodes. Rick Ollier watches in amazement as the Federation battleships start to explode from the inside out. Oh, what's that? It's blowing up from the inside. <laughs> I don't know. We didn't hit it. <laughs> uh, look, it sets one of ours uh, out of the main hole. <laughs> Suddenly, all of the droids on the planes of Naboo begin to shake upside down, run around in circles, and then stop. The Gungans carefully move out to inspect the frozen droids. Jar Jar pushes one of the battle droids, and it falls over. Weirding. (laughs) Anakin and R2 follow the squad (laughs) of the yellow Naboo starfighters into the main hangar. Rick Ollier and the other pilots gather around as they exit the ships. Anakin's ship skids to a stop behind the two other Naboo starfighters. Rick Ollier, Bravo 2, the other pilots, and ground crew rush to his ship. He flew into the hole behind the deflector shield and blasted the main reactor. (laughs) Amazing. Uh, they didn't teach that in the Academy Cross Check. <laughs> <laughs> We're all accounted for. Who flew that ship? Man. Anakin sheepishly opens the cockpit and stands up. All the pilots stare in amazement. Uh, I'm not going to get in trouble, am I? <laughs> <laughs> You're pretty smart for a kid. <laughs> <laughs> the large Grand Cruiser of the Supreme Chancellor lands in the courtyard of the main hangar. Captain Panaka and 20 troops guard Newt Gunray and Rune Hako. Obi-Wan, the Queen, and her handmaidens stand before the Nemoidians. Now, Viceroy, you're going to have to go back to the Senate and explain all this. Where are you? He's right there. Okay. It's all right. Yeah. You're going to have to go back, back and explain all this. Panaka! Where's Panaka? Panaka? Yeah, that's oh, you. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> My shit wasn't highlighted. Uh, <laughs> I think I think you can kiss your trade franchise goodbye, bitch. The main ramp of the cruiser is lowered as Obi-Wan and Captain Panaka lead the Viceroy and his assistant toward the ship. The Grand Chancellor Palpatine and several Republic guards descend the walkway, followed by Yoda and several other Jedi Masters. Chancellor Palpatine is greeted by the Queen. Congratulations on your election, Chancellor. It is so good to see you again. Oh, it's good to be home. Your boldness has saved our people, your majesty. It is you who should be congratulated. Together, 
We shall bring peace and prosperity to the Republic. I believe you. <laughs> yeah. In the turret room of the palace, the sun streams into the multi-windowed room at a low angle. It's not quite sunset. Yoda. <laughs> Paces before Obi-Wan, who is kneeling in the center of the room. I was backstage. I was like, where is he? <laughs> oh, 113? Confer on you the level of Jedi Knight the Council does. But agree. Oh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's go to the next. The chosen one of the boy may be. Nevertheless, grave danger, I fear, in his training. Uh, I skipped a line. <laughs> Well, Qui-Gon believed him, and I believe Qui-Gon. Master Yoda, I'll, I'll, I'll pick it up. Master Yoda, I gave Qui-Gon my word, and I will train Anakin without, with or without the approval of the Council, if I must. Qui-Gon's defiance, I sense in you. Need that, you do not. Agree, the Council does. Your apprentice, young Skywalker, will be... Right. <laughs> Qui-Gon's body goes up in flames as everybody watches. There is a drum roll that stops. <laughs> Doves are released and the body is gone. Anakin looks to Obi-Wan. He is one with the force, Anakin. You must let go. What will happen to me now? Uh, I'm your master now. Yes. So, <laughs> yeah, you'll be a Jedi, I promise. There is no doubt the mysterious warrior was a Sith. Always two there are. No more. No less. Master? <laughs> but which one was destroyed? Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> the Miester? Or the Apprentice? <laughs> Children sing and throw flowers on the passing Gungan soldiers. <laughs> the crowds cheer. It is a grand parade. <laughs> Queen Amadala stands next to the Supreme... Chancellor Palpatine, Anakin, Obi-Wan, C.O. Bibble, and the Jedi Council. R2 stands in front of the Queen's handmaidens and whistles at the parade. Queen Amidala and Palpatine smile at one another. In the parade are Boss Nass and his guards, Jar Jar and General Seal. The Gungans ride Cadu. They stop before the Queen and walk up the steps to stand by her side. Boss Nass holds up the Globe of Peace. Everyone cheers. The parade marches on. The, the end. end. Oh, boy. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for coming out tonight. Christina Ariel, Eric Bowser, James Bladen, Jeremy Carter, Matt Gorley, Tony Hale, Diana Lee, and Asanto, Hal Loveland, Mark McConville, Vic McCallis, Bobby Moynihan, Lorraine Newman, Tony Newsom, Harry Joel Osmond, Corinne Wells, Chris Anthony Tan, Jojo Ginn, Ella Ender, retired filmmaker George Lucas, uh, Star Wars Minifans, Georgie Porgies, Dynasty Typewriter, Dax, Samuel, everybody here. Thank you so much for coming. Guys, if you like the show, there's some posters outside that were made up specifically for the show by Alex. You can buy them out there. Thank you again for coming. May the force be with you.